in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Ask the Lord to give you a very definite encounter tonight. Someone is still praying. I have come with my heart opened. Visit me. Let my life step into another trajectory in the spirit. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. For in Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. This is the house of God. This is a place for transformation. This is a place for encounters. This is a place where the supernatural power of God finds expression unrestrained. And it is important that as you come to God, that you come with your heart open. The Bible says, he that cometh to God, Hebrews eleven six, must believe first that he exists and then that he's the rewarder, not of everybody, not of Christians, of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, visit us tonight by your spirit. Glorify Jesus through our lives. Spirit of the living God, find unrestrained access to our lives, our minds, our destinies in the name of Jesus. Let tonight be an extraordinary experience for us. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Good to see everyone in church. Azaria family, blessings to you. UK, US, Canada, Koinonia Global. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so it's my joy to welcome you again um, to this glorious service. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Very quickly before we get to the word, I want to um, specially honor a very great man of God, Dr. Francis Miles. Please, let's give him a big koinonia welcome. <laughs> Blessings to you, Bishop. Please give him a, a big, 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 big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We first met um, in Johannesburg and it was a warm time together. And now he's here with us at home. God bless you. Bless you and honor you, Bishop, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And everyone who has come from far and near, you are most welcome in Jesus' name. Now, the teaching of the word imparts wisdom to the believer. One of the ways that we access the wisdom of God is when we are methodically mentored. When the word of God comes, it sustains the ability to impart the wisdom of God. And then when we expose ourselves in an atmosphere of worship, just crying out our hearts, one of the things that worship does is it brings you into an experience of the nature and the character of God. You can teach people about the fruit of the Spirit, but just because they are aware of the existence of those manifestations of God's nature does not mean they will have it. They need to be exposed. It's like, it's like marinating your, your meat. You know, you put it and then you soak it and let it there for hours. And then when that marination is done, you find out that within that meat, within that protein, the, the fluid that surrounded it has now found itself inside. That's what happens to believers. So when we have extensive moments of worship, just pressing into his presence, it's not a waste of time at all. 
you're opening up your spirit to become more like him and then of course impartations help you to experience the power of God even in your life when you come to church you must be conscious of the fact that every part of the church service was designed by God to do something to your spirit man from the opening prayer to the final blessing hallelujah that's for me thank you I hope I don't need it because when this plane lifts we only land when the job is done God bless you hallelujah so the teaching of the word worship and then impartation hallelujah lay your hands on your head in one minute and say father let your word come with power let it radically transform my life someone pray go ahead and pray let your word come with power let your word sink into my spirit let me not just be a hearer let me understand and then i am a doer to see the results that follow in the name of jesus christ amen right let's get to work the lord has put a very serious burden in my heart tonight i have come to unleash a burden that the lord has put in my spirit i want to talk about an area that is affecting many 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 believers world over many believers in nigeria many believers in this place right now hallelujah i have been concerned and it's been a burden that i've received from the spirit and the lord just granted me the release to share a few things and i want you to please lend me your attention for many of you what you are hearing tonight will be a deliverance for you for many of you god is giving you clarity of understanding and positioning you to produce result you believe that shout a believing amen, amen. hallelujah psalm 23 please we'll read verse 1 and that is where our discussion will be from the bible says the lord is my shepherd as a result of this he says i shall not want this is my topic tonight i shall not want i want to show you by the spirit biblical keys that will bring you to a realm of abundance to a wealth a, a, a wealthy place and a dimension of supplies in the spirit many believers have been affected especially this year in the area of their finances there are many families bleeding even in the area of finances unable to meet up demands there are many pastors right now their problem is not just demons they can handle that with one declaration in the name of Jesus but many have been constrained in the area of finances to the point that many people who were once known as persons of integrity right now have found themselves roaming around the corridors of compromise because of this issue of finances it has crippled individuals it has crippled families it has crippled great and noble visions many destinies have been crushed because under the weight of this cancer this demon of financial insufficiency it sadly has been responsible for the high divorce rates that we experience in our world today there are many young people destined to become inventors presidents apostles prophets who have hardly made any progress in destiny limited not just by things like ill health and all of that but just because their families did not have the economic wherewithal to help them make progress hallelujah our world is full of people today who walk as literal epistles what happens to a man when you do not have financial means the means to go forward the means to do well our world today is governed economically and any believer who wants to live an effective Christian life, any believer who wants to love the Lord and to survive within this end time, among the many tools that you must be equipped with is the ability to understand God's economic system and to bring to your life abundant financial resources 
that give you the liberty to serve God with integrity, to live a life of meaning and purpose, and to be a blessing to your world. If that is you, shout a believing amen. amen. There are many books that God instructed to be written to guide the body of Christ, but these books have hardly gotten to the table of the publishing houses, not because the receiver did not receive, not because he did not want to obey, but the financial wherewithal to get that to the nations is not there. There are many crusades right now that the souls of sinners were connected to that crusade by prophecy, that it is on account of that crusade, many will come to Jesus. I'm always touched when I hear the testimonies that come from this altar, and sometimes I wonder, I just wonder, what if the crusade did not happen? What if the teaching did not happen? What if there was no service on that church I mean, um, no, no, no service that day in church where the individual was changed and transformed. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, settle it for a fact that if you are limited economically, the purposes of God in your life will suffer, your dignity will be under attack, and every other aspect of your life will suffer eventually. Living in denial will only be prolonging your pain until you are forced by life to come into a painful reality that whosoever is incapacitated economically will become a victim always. Hallelujah. It is the responsibility of the church to build believers holistically. First, laying emphasis on our spiritual growth. In order of priority, you've heard me say this, that your spiritual advancement and progress it is my primary responsibility and that should be the primary responsibility of any responsible man of God, any responsible ministry. But in addition to your spiritual well-being, it's important that believers be taught the whole counsel of God and that includes helping them to excel in every other facet of life. And I have discovered from scripture, from experience and by privilege of leadership, that when finances is sorted out at any level, many things will go forward in your life. Because there are many things in your life that will have to mark time waiting for the matching order that financial availability will give them. Are we together? And so if you are incapacitated financially, many other things will suffer. And that includes your passion for God. That includes your determination to be a responsible parent. That includes your determination to live a life of meaning and integrity. Believers shy away from the subject of finances for many reasons. One, because it has been wrongly taught or largely taught from a standpoint of carnality, a standpoint of lust, laced with all kinds of imbalances that doesn't end up inspiring the people to desire to see the blessing of the Lord upon their lives, but it produces a lust-driven congregation. People who are hungry, obsessed, even unto death. People can cheat and kill in church. People can do anything because we have proposed inaccurate narratives about the subject of money or finances. And this has most affected my generation of young people because of the pressure to try to show that the world is working. Many preachers, many individuals, many businessmen, many young men have found themselves in troubles today that only the mercy of God can bring them out. Are we learning now? And then on the other hand, there are people who have lived in denial and proposed that sense of denial to many people who have embraced other aspects of the kingdom but ignored the subject of finances for whatever reason. And many are crying under the weight of their ignorance, the weight of their pride, the weight of their irresponsibility as far as the subject of finances is concerned. My teaching tonight is an expression of my commitment to see us holistically blessed. My teaching tonight is an expression of the burden that the Lord has put in my life. But my teaching tonight is also an, an expression of love. You will have to be a very wicked person to turn away from the financial reality that is plaguing people economically. I have seen this everywhere. I've had the honor to travel. I have seen this bring people down. The purposes of God is under attack. And one of the potent forces that Satan is using in this end time 
is financial hardship. Hallelujah. There are people locked up in hospitals today. You can imagine the gentleman who came sharing his testimony, $50,000. And you see, one of the ways that the devil destroys finances is by bringing mysterious sicknesses that you keep paying for and you are never healed by. An individual would not spend bills up to $50,000 for just no reason. But when an individual is sick, you will sell anything, you will borrow anything because it is your attempt to keep the person alive. And then unfortunately, if the person passes on to glory, the hospital will sympathize with you, but you will still pay. Hallelujah. The wife of the sons of the prophet was in that kind of situation. The Bible says her husband died, leaving her and her two sons and I'm sure they gave her some time to pay back and she couldn't pay back. And as it was the customs of that day, they came to pick up her sons, representing her future. She had to run to the prophet for help. I'm praying tonight that as I teach, may someone find help. Yeah. Help out of this financial calamity once and for all. I don't have to be a prophet to know and speak confidently that there are many people right now under the weight of debt and bills. Debt and bills. Personally, corporately. There are people right now you are behind in your rent. There are people right now you are behind those following from across the globe. Did you know with all due respect, I respect the West, I respect Europe, America, Canada, but I am moved sometimes knowing how much people, especially foreigners and immigrants, how much they have to work and literally that whole money goes into housing. Hallelujah. The average person's rent abroad is not, is not something to laugh about. Hallelujah. And people work two jobs, three jobs, sometimes multiple jobs, and you literally cannot get a father, cannot see his children, children cannot see their parents, family life has gone under attack because everybody must make ends meet. If you default one month, two months, they check you out. It's as simple and as honest as that. And if for any reason you lose that little job now, it is amazing. There is an attack upon believers that we are not aware of. And if we do not wake up with responsibility and discernment, the Bible says be sober, then it says be vigilant for your adversary the devil the bible says he roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and one of the ways that he's devouring many many ministries many businesses many individuals finance there are couples today who vowed a vow of faithfulness to one another and they've kept that vow until money came money divided people and is still dividing people across families there are children today who have become um, epitomes of Sodom and Gomorrah because groups, occultic groups across the globe have proposed to them that if you change certain orientations about yourself, the reward is that you will get some kind of financial support. And while this is happening, the church is just folding her arms and saying, we know that God is in control. The church must rise up and take responsibility as responsible believers to deal with this subject there are a few radical mind shifts that i want to happen to you tonight as we discuss this delicate subject someone prophesy up front i shall not want say it convincingly i shall not want while you are saying this i want you to imagine some of you your parents of blessed memory saying my son what i could not do may you be able to do it what I could not do, I couldn't build, I couldn't serve God, I couldn't give to the program of God. May you be able to do it. Prophesy again, I shall not want. Let it be a determination within your heart. I shall not want, meant in the name of Jesus in my lifetime, I must come out of a realm of begging and borrowing. I shall not want, meant in the name of Jesus in my lifetime, I will finally have a chance to live a life of dignity and integrity, serving the Lord, giving to the kingdom, and living an honorable life. I shall not want, means in the name of Jesus Christ, the limitations that come as a result of finance will be far from my life. One more time, shout it before I begin teaching. I shall not want. The Bible says so, that the Lord is my shepherd. Then he says, I shall not want. Write this down, please. 
Financial prosperity in the kingdom is a combination of the following. Financial prosperity in the kingdom is a combination of the following. Number one, laws, A-L-A-W-S, laws and principles. Financial prosperity in the kingdom is a combination of the following. One, laws and principles. Number two, human factors. Human factors. Please listen, listen. Some of the things you'll be hearing tonight, with all due respect, I will tell you, you may not have heard them, maybe not, not ever, or perhaps not soon. Human factors. Number three, financial prosperity in the kingdom is a function of divine empowerment. A combination of number one, laws and principles. Number two, human factors. Number three, divine empowerment. Number four, the help of God. I will tell you what the difference between three and four is. Anyone you see who has prospered in the kingdom with the dignity of kingdom integrity has interacted with these fourfold forces that are responsible for bringing people into a realm of financial prosperity, financial abundance, even wealth. Number one, I repeat again, laws and principles. Number two, human factors. Number three, divine empowerment. Number four, the help of God. May you experience all four. I'm going to go straight to the point. I have done a number of teachings on finance in this house. And so there are a number of foundations we already have. I do not want to visit those foundations again. So I want to deal with the major areas I have in preparing my notes and pick a few areas that I think by the spirit is where the difficulty in understanding the subject of kingdom wealth is. And these are the areas that I want to talk to. So I want to to listen very carefully hallelujah that financial prosperity in the kingdom is a combination an interplay when god wants to prosper men in the kingdom is beyond just a divine pronouncement it is an interplay of number one laws and principles both spiritual and natural like you have been taught number two human factors this is a very major the um uh, a major um, um, what, what do I call it now? A major determining factor, human factors. It is the reason why the journey to wealth looks very hard because of this second point, human factors. Number three, divine supernatural empowerment. And then number four is God himself as a factor, the help of God. Can we begin now? The starting point of every financial journey the starting point of every financial journey is an awareness of the following the starting point from point a to whatever points that you seek to be the starting point please listen carefully because many believers the average believers orientation about finance is just a business to do and then profits to make or some investments having a return or a job, receiving a salary or whatever it is. This, this is a very wrong, is a loser's approach immediately. I'm telling you up front. If you approach the subject of finances just by thinking of what to do and then versus what you have, you will lose eventually. It is not wrong. There is a place for them, but it must be line upon line. Are we together? Precept upon precept. So the starting point of every financial journey is an awareness of the following. Number one, that it is the will of God for you to prosper financially. Please write it down. The starting point of your financial journey is an awareness that number one, it is the will of God for you to prosper. As simple as this statement is, there are many believers who are still fighting that mental, that internal battle as to whether in truth 
God desires that they prosper. And because of the several teachings that are around the body of Christ today, globally speaking, for or against the subject of prosperity, well-intentioned believers want to make sure that they are on a safe side. They do not want to do anything that displeases the Lord. And from a sincere standpoint, they want to be sure that they are on the Lord's side. Is it the will of God for you to prosper? Proverbs 10, 22. Let's turn there. 10, 22, Proverbs. The Bible says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he added no sorrow with it. May that be your testimony. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. That word rich is not a parable, it's not an idiom. Rich means rich. It maketh rich and added no sorrow with it. Scripture number two. Deuteronomy 8.18. 8.18. Are we together? <coughs> Excuse me. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Notice, power to get wealth. Notice, power to get wealth. Who gives it? God. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. Can we consider number three? Isaiah 35, 27. You must have the awareness that is the will of the Lord. 27. 27, not two. Isaiah 35, 27. Did I get that right? Let them shout for joy. If I miss the scripture, please find it for me. That favor my righteous cause. Psalms. My apologies, not Isaiah. Psalms. Psalms. Psalms 35, 27 it is. Let them shout continually. Thank you. Please correct that. Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. That means if you are not one who favors his righteous cause, he's not talking to you. Then he says, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Is that in your Bible? Yes. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17 will be the final scripture to establish this point. The starting point of every financial journey is an awareness that number one, it is the will of God for you and I to prosper. Here's what the Bible says. Paul is charging Timothy. Charge them that are rich in this world, he says, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. And he says that God gives us richly. How many things? All things to enjoy. He's bringing a warning to those who are rich. He never talked about their wealth. He spoke about something that becomes a side effect of them being rich without God. He says them that are rich in this world. That means there is worldly, a worldly financial system and there is the kingdom financial system. Are we learning now? Say after me, it is the will of God for me to prosper financially. As simple and as childlike as this sounds, say it again. It is the will of God for me to prosper financially. Till the day I see the face of Jesus, I will never, never believe, never believe that God is the author of poverty or the one responsible for it or that God is happy when you are in a state where you are financially incapacitated. It is not in scripture. It is inconsistent with his nature. It is inconsistent with his ways. It is inconsistent with the very definition of love. So number one, the first awareness you must have if you want to prosper in the kingdom is that it is the will of God. Look up please. How many of you know that something happens to you when you verify that you are in the will of God? Believers who love Jesus do not want to find themselves outside of the will of God. And that's why in ancient times they would ask the Lord, should I pursue? And he would say, pursue. And the moment he gave that marching order, there was no stopping. They would pursue, they would overtake, and they would recover. 
Many believers are still wondering whether it is the will of God for them to prosper. I'm answering you from the lens of scripture. Absolutely. Is it the will of God for Koinonia to prosper? Yes. Is it the will of God for you to prosper in your family? Yes. As a man of God? Yes. As a businessman? Yes. As a believer? Yes. Orientation number two. The starting point of every financial journey is an awareness that number two, financial prosperity is one of the blessings that comes with loving and serving God. Please write this down. Financial prosperity is one of the blessings that comes with loving and serving God. Please underline loving and underline serving God. Financial prosperity there are a number of blessings. The Bible calls them benefits. Psalm 103. When you read Psalm 103, there are five of them like you have been taught in this house. The Bible talks about them being his benefits. So the second orientation that you must have as a starting point to your journey to lasting wealth in the kingdom and by God is to understand that financial prosperity is one of the blessings that loving and serving God brings. The blessing that comes with loving God and serving God. Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Say amen. amen. If they obey and serve him. One of the things that happened to the people of God every time they disobeyed God was that they suffered economically. There were a number of things that always happened to the Israel of God every time they violated his ordinances. Among them was they plunged back to lack and want. Are we together now? There were times that they were afflicted in their health. There were times that they lost their estate access to whatever place was given to them. And every time God restored his people, among the many things he did as proof that he had now come to be with them was that he restored them financially. Financial prosperity is one of the blessings of loving and serving God. I'm going to say something that will disturb you, but it is true. Show me a Christian who sincerely loves God with all his heart. Show me a Christian who is serving God sincerely and is still broke there is something that christian is not doing well if it is the god of heaven you are serving are we together you love jesus with all your heart and you are serving him with all your heart genuinely non-pretentiously it is impossible to spend your life in financial pain except if you have violated the least as aforementioned the ignorance of his laws you have not considered the human factors. You have rejected willfully empowerment by God. You have rejected the help of God. Otherwise, anybody who truly loves Jesus and serves Jesus will eventually, among all the blessings that loving Jesus brings, eventually you will experience and in your lifetime, you will taste of financial prosperity. May that be your portion. Are you ready for number three? Is God helping someone already? The third orientation that you must have as you begin an intentional journey towards experiencing God's supply in your life is that you must have, watch this now, watch this now. You can have abundant financial resources, I wrote here, without knowing or loving the Lord. Write it, that's not the end of the statement, but just write because I'm dictating. You can have abundant financial resources without knowing or loving the Lord. Comma. You can have abundant financial resources without knowing or loving the Lord. But the peace and fulfillment that comes with it only comes from God. Let me take it again. You can have abundant financial resources without knowing the Lord and without loving the Lord. But the peace, hallelujah, and fulfillment that comes with being financially blessed only, on the line only please, comes from God. This is true. 
That means you can be rich without God. Many today are rich without God. There are billionaires who do not believe in Jesus. There are millionaires in Naira and dollars who do not believe in Jesus. There are occultic organizations that are worth billions of dollars who are directly antichrist. So it is possible that you can, listen carefully, do not be surprised when you see unbelievers prosper. Do not be surprised when you see non-believers, people who are vocally resistant to the gospel, prosper. Our world is full of many people who have abundant financial resources. Some of them curse God to the face while they are prospering. However, the peace and fulfillment that comes with money only comes from God. I can tell you that. Proverbs 10, 22. We read it earlier on, we'll read it again. The blessing of the Lord, the Bible says, make it rich. Then it does not stop there. It says, and he added no sorrow with it. That means anybody who prospers, you add something with it. Takes away something with it. There are people who got money at the expense of their conscience. There are people who got money at the expense of their allegiance. You know, you, they had to fraternize with occultic groups. There are people today who have money, but they cannot sleep. They live in mansions, but they sit on chairs all through the night because they cannot find sleep. I can tell you this. There are many wealthy people who live on injections and drugs because they cannot sleep. They are owners of estates celebrated world over, but dying alone. No wonder you have even among the wealthy people who will stash millions and billions in their accounts, write letters and commit suicide. Why should a multi-millionaire, why should a billionaire be committing suicide? You would think with the presence of money, there is, let me tell you this. There are problems that only come to your life because you are rich. Money solves other problems, but the realm of wealth has its own problems. And the problems that poor people have, money can solve most of it. But the problems that rich people have, only God can solve it. Did you hear what I said? The problems that poor people have, money can usually solve most of it. Most poor people's problems is how to get, uh, how do they say it now? To get ends to meet. But for a wealthy person, most rich people, their problems is not how to get uh, ends to meet. No. When you have a problem that money cannot solve, you are in trouble. Because you will need God. Most poor people, there are problems I can tell you. And poor here not being an insult, just a description of a state of living. Most poor people, the problems, 90% of a poor man's problem, I can tell you, can be solved with finances. Housing, food, health care, etc. But there are people who get to a realm where they have all the money and everybody within their realm also has money. At that point, what solves money? It's not what solves their problem. It's not money again. So if you, be, if you get beguiled by social media and television to believe that just because people are flashing designers, driving the most expensive cars, living, having the most luxurious living, and sometimes even believers admire this and they say, God, but this is what I want now. Is it that you cannot give me? I've had the honor and... I say this with every sense of humility. I have met billionaires in dollars. I have spoken with very wealthy people. You do not want to know the problems that wealthy people have. For most wealthy people, one of their major problems is succession. The devil makes sure that most of them have foolish children. So by the time the people spend all that money, the man has billions, but he's crying and bleeding. And saying, so everything I worked for, there is a foolish child waiting for me to die. And this child is going to blow up everything. And truly the child is waiting for the father to die. Have you seen billionaires who pass on to glory and in one year, their entire estate goes down? Hallelujah. When you meet very wealthy people, you will see some of them, their best friends are the cleaners in their houses. 
not the owners of other companies because they live a lonely life they can't share anything to anybody and information that comes from them leaking that information can be equal ten thousand dollars one million dollars everything about their life makes money including their secrets so they can't tell anybody are you learning now they live a very lonely life very lonely life they are everywhere but they are alone their pictures are everywhere but they are alone they wake up in the night inject themselves with all kinds of substances so that they can sleep for three or four hours wealth without god some of them are called james in nigeria they are called john in europe they are called gabriel in dubai in one island they are called another name they have over 10 20 passports depending on where they are because you don't know which government will fight you at any given time so you have to be ready to run away kai listen if you ever admire wealth without god may you grow enough to see fast because there are many many people today i hope you know that wealthy people are not angels they are human beings they have problems they have problems solomon got into that state when solomon became wealthy he wisdom made him wealthy but when he became so wealthy he was lonely he tried 700 wives it didn't work 300 concubines it didn't work he said confessing his own sins he said everything my eyes saw do you know that what that means it's one great you know personality who had that problem i don't know what they call it anything he saw he would want to buy it they had to hire a manager to control his appetite true story so you can tell him sir i know you have the money for this but do you need it so they give you three questions to answer before you buy anything because he has gotten to a point where it has manipulated his understanding if he saw anything and did not buy it he could lose sleep there is a medical name for it hello it can affect you because that realm there are some sicknesses that don't affect other people but let me tell you this i'm not insulting you my dear people I'm just trying to tell you this listen that there are problems that only happen when you have money and before you blindly admire people and ignore Jesus and say don't worry this man our world is full of people today saying there are people who don't know Jesus and yet they are wealthy you don't know the problems Satan attacks everybody so what do you think if you are Satan wouldn't you design a problem unique to rich people you have seen what he does with poor people what about rich people multiple identities some of those people you see have they cannot sleep peace is one thing money cannot give it can create an environment but here's what jesus said john 14 27 we're establishing the third point is god speaking to someone he says peace i live with you my peace i give unto you there are other kinds of peace but my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth are you saying that now he said let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid ladies and gentlemen you want to start your journey to finances just know that if you come to jesus just because you want to make money you will be disappointed because you will see people in your journey who do not respect jesus and they keep having money and ending their year there are people who this year will be their most profitable year in business and they hated jesus more between january and and december their hatred for jesus has multiplied just like their profits so how do you explain such a thing if you ever see any wealthy man on earth who became wealthy and rejected jesus there is a void in the heart of all men that only the size of god can fill. did you hear that there is a void in every man once you came from god by god you are in the earth there is a void that money cannot fill there is a void that vacations luxurious five seven star vacations cannot fill who is like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty endless worth 
Listen. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that grown run dry. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrongs. You're the holder of my future days to come. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. This is what is missing in the wealth equation of many wealthy people. So they run to pastors. So they run to spiritualists. So they run to people and say, I have everything life can offer. But the joy that comes from Jesus, I do not have. The peace that comes from Jesus, I do not have. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you up front. You can prosper financially without God. But the peace and joy and fulfillment that is added to God's dimension of prosperity, no business can give you. No investment can give you. You don't get that one in a bank. You don't get that one in an institution. You only get it from a person. He's called the Prince of Peace. Are you learning? So for those of you who want to hustle and make it without God, and you are saying, God, I've served you, I've tried for you. Let me focus on my finances. I'm giving you an advice up front so that you are not disappointed. The pursuit of wealth, the pursuit of money without God can give you the money, but with it you will miss something that will make the money useless. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have not seen any dead man carry his money out of the earth. Have you seen it? Not even the expensive coffin. Billionaires die. They enter the same ground. There is no special ground for billionaires. No matter who you are, by the time you die, is the same earth. On, you see, physically, we have VVVIPs, VIP services on earth. Where to enter, how to fly, how to eat, VIP plates, VIP whatever. There's no VIP grave. Everybody goes to the ground. And you do not even know who you are lying on top. So if the only thing that you, you believe that you have money and you feel I don't need God, no, peace. You see, we have to, this will even help you to know how to preach to wealthy people. If you want to preach to wealthy people and say God will take away all your financial problems, it's a wrong audience. They will not listen to you. That's why when Jesus called for the feast, all the rich people refused to come. You remember that our discussion? They refuse. Another person said, I just married or I, I just bought something. If, and he said, go to those who are, have all these problems. And they came. There is something you can tell a wealthy man. The Prince of Peace can give you peace. These 127 businesses you have around the world that is keeping you awake, even though wealthy. You are worth $1 billion, but you are owing $5 billion. There is the Prince of Peace who gives men sleep. Are we together now? Number four. What is the fourth orientation you must have if you want to be sustainably wealthy? Can we continue? Wealth and abundance in the kingdom. I said it as a preamble, but now I'm structuring it into the point. Wealth and abundance in the kingdom is a function of laws, human factors, divine empowerment, and the help of God. This is the fourth thing you need to know. Laws in the kingdom is a function, an interplay of laws, human factors, divine empowerment, and the God factor. 
Don't choose the laws alone. Don't choose the human factors alone. Don't choose divine empowerment alone. Choose God ultimately, but respect the system he designed to. Do you notice that the four points I gave you, people have been independently wealthy, isolating any one of them. There are those who have been wealthy only by laws and principles. There are those who have been wealthy only by human factors. For instance, relationship and corruption. There are those who have been wealthy only by divine empowerment. An anointing came into your life and you prophesied to someone and the person said, I'll be a partner with you and your ministry forever. You don't know jack about finances, but you have money in your hand. And there are others who God just decided to bless or well, not decided really. For by whatever reason, their alignment to God, they just secured his favor in their lives. But sustainable wealth comes when you can combine all this together. Now watch this. When you make jollof rice, you mix all kinds of ingredients together with the rice. Am I right? But imagine that you have a table full of pepper and salt and onion and rice. Then you decide to eat the pepper. Then swallow the salt. Look up, please. And then you carry the onion and eat it. Then you carry the dry rice like that and eat it. And say the most important thing is that it, it will combine when it gets there. Is that jollof rice? You see the problem with the body of Christ? What you want to produce is jollof rice. Your ingredients are right, but others are eating pepper alone. Others are taking salt alone. Others are taking the seasonings alone. Others, it's even the dry rice themselves they are eating. And say, why doesn't it taste like jollof rice? Because there is something you must do to eat first. This is what I'm helping you do. Are we together now? So wealth and abundance. This is where the fight between preachers and businessmen have come. Businessmen will tell you, listen, forget about all these preachers lying and deceiving you. You just be sincere, be valuable, and you'll be rich. And people will come and say, it's true. When I stopped listening to these nonsense men of God are preaching, and I now became serious, had a business, I now became a millionaire. And then on the other hand, you will see someone and say, I don't know anything about business. I have never gone to any financial school. I don't know anything. All I know is as a man of God, I preached, God raised somebody, gave me a house and a car. And now you are confused because both of them are prosperous. Wealth and abundance in the kingdom is a function of laws, human factors, divine empowerment. Human factors, for instance, if God helps you and your uncle is responsible for contracts in a company and he just calls you and he says, from here to here, I will give you the contract. You are the one supplying this. You can become wealthy even with the, the serious ignorance just because a human factor worked to your advantage. In the Bible, we call it the law of time and chance. And the Bible says it happens to them all. There are people who are wealthy today not because they really understand the laws. When time and chance came to them, they were able to take advantage of that opportunity. Let me give you number five. Are we learning? Number five, please, very quickly. The starting point of every financial journey is an awareness that number five, this will be a shift in your thinking, but I want you to listen to it carefully. God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor. Write it down, please. God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor. God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor. No. If you remain poor in your life, it is not God that chose it that way. If you decide to be prosperous, it's not that God uniquely chose you. Regardless, you're participating in the laws that make for prosperity. Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. Please follow carefully. Give it to us, please. Deuteronomy 30, 15. See, I have said before you this day, follow carefully now, Koinonia, life and good, death and evil, 16, in that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his status, 
and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. Are you seeing that now? And the Lord your God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest and pass to it. 17. But if thine hand turn away, thy heart turn away, so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. 18. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go and possess it. 19. I call heaven, watch this now, and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you, Koinonia, life and death. I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, I won't force you. Choose life. I've shown you life with its benefits. I've shown you death and curses with their, whole, their limitations. Choose life. I can only advise you, but I cannot force you, that both thou and thy seed may live. Verse 20. It says that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, obey his voice, cleave unto him. This is what choose life means. For he is thy life and the length of thy days. Thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. God does not decide who becomes wealthy or who remains poor. The Bible lets us know in Proverbs 22 and verse 2, very disturbing but truthful scripture. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. God did not make them so, but he made them all. You would think that because of this scripture, the Bible would just say men live together. But the Bible separates them into two groups, the rich and the poor. It says God made them all. But they made themselves either rich or poor. And I give you the final orientation. So God does not decide who becomes wealthy. Don't see people who are getting wealthy and say God just decided to bless them. God just decided to bless the man of God. Decided to bless the family. And we are just cursed. No, God does not work like that. Six. And the final orientation. Then I will now show you how money in the kingdom works. How wealth in the kingdom works. Write this down, please. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire or a billionaire. Please write this. I want you to start that statement. It is going to be a big deliverance for someone right now. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire or billionaire. It is about having supplies that meets your needs, supports the kingdom, and makes you a blessing to your world. Let me take it again. Kingdom wealth, please believe us, hear this, is not about being a millionaire or a billionaire. Write that, then I continue. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire or being a billionaire. It is about having supplies that meet your needs, supplies that empowers you to support the kingdom, supplies that empower you to bless your world. That is the goal of kingdom wealth. One last time. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire. Body of Christ, hear me. Kingdom wealth is not just about being a millionaire. Or being a billionaire. It is about having supplies that meets your needs, empowers you to support the work of the kingdom, and then empowers you to be a blessing to your world. I need to say this because there is an orientation that was sincerely sold into the church that the, the blessing of the Lord is only speaking in your life financially now to the degree that you become a multi-millionaire in naira and dollars multi-billionaire in naira and dollars so there are people who are on a wild campaign to make sure that by all means they prove through their lives that the grace for kingdom wealth is upon them the assignment of god is not just to make men millionaires or billionaires 
being a millionaire and a billionaire is a byproduct of your diligence, a byproduct of purpose, a byproduct of your desire to have for the sake of your comfort. Are we together? For the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of blessing the world. Whatever amount that adds up to, if at all you can give it a monetary value, that becomes what you really need. There are people on earth, if they, based on their assignment, based on their mindset, their level of alignment to their lives and the kingdom, if they ever prosper beyond $100,000, it becomes the reason why they would die. Are we together? Because there is no assignment in their life that necessitates being wealthy beyond $100,000. No purpose in their lives that needs to be funded with that degree of wealth. Are we together now? Yes. Imagine with me, for instance, that you came to visit someone and it is only you. You didn't come with any other person. And then they put a buffet on the table for you. All kinds of things. The whole table is full of food, but it's only for you. How many of you know that the visitor does not, or the owner of the house does not expect you to eat everything? That buffet is a sign of honor. You are given the liberty to pick a little here. By the time I fill my table with food and only you eat everything, there is a spirit eating with you. Because no human being under normal you know what I'm talking about? I mean table from this to this. You sat down there and kept eating, eating until you finish. No, no, no. Anything unusual is spiritual. Anything unusual, including eating something beyond your size. <laughs> are we together now? If you are with me, say amen. amen. Kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a millionaire. There's nothing wrong with being a billionaire. Are we together now? It is just a name given to you by reason of a status you attain financially. That's, that's just it. What matters to God is not that you're a millionaire or billionaire. What matters to God is that by obeying his principles, you attain a level where you can live a life of dignity. Are we together now? And then you have abundant financial resources to support the program of God. My goodness, I'm coming there shortly. It will be one of the major reasons why you must desire the blessing of the Lord upon your life. There is so much to be done for the kingdom. So much to be done. Many believers have no idea what it costs to do the work of the kingdom. There are a few people here who are pastors. There are a few people here who are church leaders. And you will agree with me that I, you always hear me say that the name of Jesus is so heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Hallelujah. God's kingdom wealth is not about being a millionaire. A millionaire with no vision, kingdom vision. A billionaire with no vision, kingdom vision is one who is only piercing himself with multiple sorrows. What gives value to the money you have is the opportunity to live a comfortable life by it. Number two, the opportunity to advance the program of God by it and then to help become a blessing to your world. These six thoughts are very powerful and I do not want you to forget them. It is the will of God for you and I to prosper. Financial prosperity is one of the blessings that come with loving and serving Jesus. That you can have abundant financial resources without knowing or without loving the Lord. But the peace and fulfillment that comes with it only comes exclusively from God. Number four, that wealth and abundance in the kingdom is a function of laws, is a function of human factors, is a function of divine empowerment, and it's a function of God, the help, the God factor. Number five, God does not decide who becomes wealthy. Please listen. God does not decide who remains poor. He's given men the liberty to take advantage of the provisions that he has put in place to decide their financial destinies. Finally, number six, kingdom wealth is not just about being a millionaire or being a billionaire. It is about having supplies that meet your needs. Watch this. By this definition, for someone, your entire financial equation can be that God would have helped you 
to a point where you have cash flow enough to live a decent life with you and your children and then to be able to ensure that something from your resources are we together now comes into the kingdom come project and then that you are able to be a blessing to your world you can choose as an act of your will that I want to love God and I'm not interested in being a billionaire and a millionaire. I want resources enough to take care of myself, fund the gospel as much as it's within my power and to be a blessing to people. It is a choice and God will respect it. Hallelujah. Because there are people in church who God has been faithful to. But because of a narrative that has been sold, that until you see millions of dollars and billions of dollars, you are not yet there. If your passion is because of the kingdom, you are fine. But let me submit to you, within the boundary of modesty and a decent life, you do not need so much money. I know you won't believe this, but it's true. Within the boundary of decency and a modest life, as far as effective living is concerned, you do not need so much. Most of the problems of people revolve around housing, upkeep, transportation, maybe taking care of children and when all those things are sorted you will find out that truly as far as your personal life is concerned most of the money we have is in the bank and it's been in the bank for years that's to tell you you really did not need it it's there it's been there for some for five years ten years there are people who have money in the bank for 20 years they've not withdrawn one tenth of it they don't need it they are just aware that it is there Are we together? There are people who have passed on to glory today and left millions and billions of naira. Their families will never know it's been there. I'm sure it goes to the bank eventually. It's not about being a millionaire. My desire is not to be a millionaire or to be a billionaire. My desire is to have as much a financial abundance and freedom that can allow me live a decent and a meaningful life, can allow me be a massive contributor to God's end time program, and can allow me be a blessing to my world. If that assignment demands that I become a billionaire, then my pursuit to be a billionaire is not a loss-driven pursuit. It came as a derivative, as a conclusion. Are we together? That there is a budget that state has to fund. There are people jumping, I'm a financial apostle, I'm a kingdom financier, and they don't know God, they don't love God, they are greedy, they are not givers, they don't even understand his program. It doesn't work that way. The idea is not bragging that I'm a millionaire, I'm a billionaire, and this is the cancer that is destroying our generation. Most people just believe, oh, I'm a millionaire, I'm a billionaire. What does that mean? Do you know that if you have an assignment, and in your lifetime, part of your assignment is to supply one billion dollars, to fund the gospel. If at the end of your life, you make $800 million, you failed in your assignment. Because with respect you are to your assignment, the grace to attain that status, are we together now? It was part of the equipping of your assignment. You just did not maximize it. Let me tell you the truth. One of my financial desires is that a time will come in my life, in my lifetime, I will write out the list of ministries around the world and all I will employ people and their work is just to be signing and sending checks. This one to North Korea. Yes. This one to this place. Oh, there's some missionary there. Okay, this one. Calculate the school fees of the children from primary school to university. And I said, dear evangelist, do not worry about sending your children to school again somebody's assignment your faithfulness has made God to give someone an assignment of raising your children for you that real estate people will rise up who will do a 2,000 housing estate and 200 of it a tithe of it goes to the kingdom not a tithe of the money a tithe of the house that you write the list of serious visionary disciplined mission agencies men and women of god to say sir we have watched you for five years you are a man that loves god with all your heart can we help you we know that you are a preacher but one day you also want to have a house you also want to live this life so that you are not distracted take yes sir yes sir 
Yes, sir. Oh, we understand that you are the way your life is. You are traveling from pillar to post. You are a missionary. Today, you are in this mission agency for six months. When are you going to get the chance to gather money together to build? So God sent me. This is my own assignment to keep your assignment going. Is someone learning now? And I truly believe that in my lifetime, there are already people doing this, but there are few, just one or two. But I believe there is going to be a sudden emergence. May it be from Koinonia. <laughs> Young men and women with no bribe, no killing, no stealing, no human sacrifices, no ritual to remove body parts and make money with it. And these are people who will roll under the ground. You will think that they are preachers and they will tell you I'm just a kingdom financier. My assignment is that you fire on. If the devil wants to afflict your children, they call you from a mission field. Don't worry. There are warriors waiting for you already. This is the orientation I want to give you. Versus, ah, this is a jeep. I claim it. This is somebody's house. Oh God, remove the person and give me the house. Bible said the wealth of the wicked. And you know, and sometimes we misquote scripture and make mistakes that only make us look foolish before the whole world. How do you come and stand in front of somebody's fence who suffered and built his house, labored for 30 years, and your prayer is that the person will go out so that you will enter? That can happen. But that's not how God works. I said before you life and death. Hallelujah. With all due respect, imagine that as I'm teaching now, an usher will just smuggle a quiet basket to you and is written and <laughs> drop something. As a matter, are you seeing that now? Suddenly you will lose concentration. You've heard me say it. One of the reasons why I'm able to preach is because I love Jesus, but also because there is food on my table. If there is no food on my table, only God knows the kind of messages that would have come that was not from the throne. Yes, sir. And it will be evil of me to have bread on my table and not be sure that there's also bread on your own table. When both of us have bread on our table, we can eat and give thanks to the one who blesses all men. And we can take from it and make sure that others too have that bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, God has helped us and granted us the, the opportunity to extend hands of blessings to many people whose destinies otherwise would have been destroyed. Families, people, there are people today who can go to school. There are people today who can eat. Christmas is on its way coming. There are people today who are happy. They will enjoy the memory of the birth of Jesus because someone is alive and empowered to do it. It takes more than having a good heart. It must translate from your heart to your hands to the world. And before I go into teaching you how wealth works in the kingdom now, I'm praying for you that number one, God will purify your heart. Listen, and, and, and I don't mean to be sarcastic. I'm speaking to everybody, but particularly my generation. I know that there is a disaster on its way to happen if God does not help. Many young men right now are determined to make it by crook or by hook. They have vowed under God, if it means removing someone's head, I will remove it. If it means removing someone's kidney, I will pluck it out, even if it's my mother, my father, my sister. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you for someone who is watching me, there is a better, more superior kingdom way than killing people. Someone will leave the market going home and enter a car and they will lay that person into the bush, butcher the person like an animal, bring out parts and on their way to a herbalist somewhere who had promised them that if you can bring a human heart, a human brain, or bring a baby, I will give you some money. And the man who is saying that is still poor. We only give what we have, such as I have. So I'm speaking to someone right now. I sense in my heart because you see, believers are loving people, but because of our naivety, you know, as a believer, your whole life is around church. And most believers do not know the things that are out there. And because of financial pressure, many believers are beginning to bend to some of these formulas unknowingly. Listen to what I want to teach you now. Killing, stealing, and destroying to be wealthy is the way of the devil. 
and I'm speaking to every young man here, stop calling yourself a hustler. That is a curse. The Bible did not give you that name. There are names the Bible gave you. We've not run out of those options. Call yourself light. Call yourself salt. Call yourself a king. Call yourself a priest. Isaiah 8 20. And if they do not speak after this manner, it is because there is no light in them. There is a way light carriers speak. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. As for me, I've made a decision that I will never be poor. It's a decision I made. Satan was around the corner. God was there on his throne. I was there. The power to choose that God gave me and I announced it before principalities and powers that in the name of Jesus, even if not for my sake, for the sake of koinonia, for the sake of the name of Jesus, for the sake of one soul tied to my life, are we together? When you have this mentality, your approach to wealth now moves from carnality to purpose. From carnality to purpose. So it's not just Jeep, estates, oil and gas, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, wonderful. But you have a more superior orientation. And I'm saying this especially to the gentlemen because it looks like the challenge in our world today is just make it, show it, and derive the fulfillment from it. So people lie today. They stand behind aircrafts they have never entered. They snap, they put online, behind cars. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying that pressure is unnecessary. Why fake what can be real? There's no point faking it. There is a realm where that becomes a reality indeed. Is someone ready now? I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, open my eyes yet again. What I'm about to show you now, open my eyes. Please pray. As you are praying for some of you, remember mama at home. Remember your father. Remember missionaries. Remember the gospel. Remember the kingdom. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Yes, Lord, it is your desire to lift me. A gentleman is praying. Zaria is praying. UK is praying. Canada, America. Go ahead, Koinonia Global. Pray, body of Christ. Take a minute to pray. Go ahead. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All right. Fasten your seatbelts and let's see how God will help us. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. Let's read together. Please write and then read. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. Ready? One to read, please. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. One more time. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. The foolish there not being a sarcastic statement, not an insult, is a description of one who is void of knowledge. The Bible calls them simple or it calls them foolish. The Bible says it will weary them. Why? Because they do not know how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. That realm of reality is a possibility. But to know how to go there. Now, how wealth works. Make reference to a number of my teachings, the power to get wealth, and then um, one other that I preached about deliverance from financial captivity. You may want to make reference to them so that certain elementary things that you need to have, I may not go into them. For instance, in that teaching, my last teaching on wealth, I defined a number of things. I defined the difference between wealth and riches. When you talk about riches, you talk about abundant supply of financial resources but when you talk about wealth 
you talk of the availability of abundant financial resources alongside the systems are we together the systems that guarantee replenishing the difference between wealth and abundance is that while abundance deals with the presence of resources wealth deals with the presence of resources plus systems that have been put in place to guarantee replenishing are we together now so just because a man has abundance does not mean he's wealthy i can give you 10 million naira now you are well you are rich but you are not wealthy because you have abundant financial resources and with it you can do a lot of things you are now rich you can become wealthy but you are not yet wealthy wealth is not just measured in the amount of money but is measured in the kind of financial systems you have put around your life to guarantee that there is no depletion that you keep going higher and higher in the name of jesus christ the first way wealth works and i want you to listen my dear people I have taught you that wealth is centered around principles and laws. Everything that God designed starts from the realm of the spirit. Please let me have your attention. In Genesis chapter 1, man came as a spirit before a bodily material frame came to the man. When the Bible gave God that dominion mandate in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, when he says, let them have dominion, he was not speaking to the dark earth, Adam. He was speaking to the spirit of man. Are we together now? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, cattle, and so on and so forth now. So you need to understand that in order of divine happenings, things first happen in the realm of the spirit, and then they manifest physically. Are we together now? The calamity of Job started in the realm of the spirit. Then the Bible says there was a certain day when it manifested. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, a spiritual reality. But there was a certain moment in time when it happened. So when it has to do with the subject of wealth, it starts from the realm of the spirit. To approach the subject of wealth just from an economic standpoint, are we together? Or just from a physical standpoint, you have already missed it. Occultists know this. Non-Christians know this. Very few believers know this. That in approaching the subject of wealth, regardless what your spiritual orientation is, the truth is that the proper foundation for wealth is the realm of the spirit. The same way when you look at a tree, please look at me. How many of you know that the growth of a tree starts from under the ground? The invisible part you cannot see before it comes up. Am I right on that? When you plant a mango seed, when you plant an orange seed, the day you see the shoot coming up, is that the day it started growing? No. Something begins to happen from under the earth that you cannot see. Just because you cannot see it does not mean it is not happening. That, that initial growth is the system and the structure that will maintain it when it becomes a giant oak tree. Am I right on that? So it is with the realm of the spirit. You don't throw a seed on the ground. You don't throw a mango seed on the ground, an orange seed on the ground, and then expect a tree from that on the ground. No, you have to open the ground, throw it and cover it. What happens there now can be studied scientifically, but to the layman's eyes, you take it that this is an invisible thing happening that you cannot see, and from it, most people go up and down financially because your wealth is only economic. It does not have a spiritual root. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body. Midwifing that body and that spirit is the solical faculties that makes that person a soul. It is an order that must never be compromised. The day on earth starts from the realm of the spirit. It is not chronological time that controls day and night. The root of our day is in the realm of the spirit. Everything that happens, happens in the realm of the spirit. The sea that we see today came from the realm of the spirit. The earth that we see today came from the realm of the spirit. The wind that we see today came from the realm of the spirit. 
Everything that we see today, according to Hebrews 11 and verse 3, came from the realm of the spirit. So, attempting to become wealthy God's way and ignoring the realm of the spirit will only be you wasting your time. Because manipulations happen there. Solomon got it right. His prosperity started from the realm of the spirit. Nation of Israel, the realm of the spirit. David, the realm of the spirit. The rich fool, the problem with his wealth is that there was no spiritual connection in that his allegiance was just to his wealth. There was no spiritual root. And he said, this day, your soul is demanded of you. What does that mean? That means adherence to spiritual laws in order of priority. Adherence to spiritual laws is the foundation of understanding how money works. Adherence to spiritual laws I gave you about a, a number of them, but majorly, number one, the law of absolute surrender. Remember that the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is not tithing. Tithing is an important law, but the first law is absolute surrender. When God comes to a man, he's not looking for your money. He's looking for your heart. He says, my son, give me your heart and let your ears be inclined to my ways. It is when God gets your heart that your money becomes profitable. Hallelujah. There are people who give God money. There are people who do a lot of things, but their hearts are not with God. In God's economy, your heart matters beyond your resources. It is the state of your heart that gives value to your giving, gives value to whatever you do in this kingdom. The law of absolute surrender. Number two, the law of the tithe. It's very important. There are all kinds of arguments in the world today about tithe. I believe in tithing. I'm a tithing individual with revelation by revelation and with joy. Koinonia is a tithing ministry with revelation by revelation with joy. And for as long as I live, this is a principle and an ordinance with understanding, void of compulsion, and the fruits are there to show. Are we together? Every believer in Christ, every man of God, with all due respect, has a right to teach whatever they believe God has told them, including myself. It is your responsibility as a responsible believer to stay with the Holy Spirit and vet from the lens of Scripture, even in light with the of the results that follow. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. I believed in tithing, period. It is a conviction that came void of compulsion. I'm a student of Scripture. I have studied my Bible. I have stayed with God. And as a leader, I owe you a responsibility to plant in you your conviction. Do not let anything, anything threaten your diligence to tight with understanding. Are we together? In addition to tithing, the covenant of giving. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I'm sharing with you in summary the spiritual principles. If you do not give, God will not hate you but you will suffer the consequences of violating his principles. The epitome of love still has people going to hell today and he's watching them because as much as he loves them, he gave them the option to choose and some of them chose not to trust him and he respected their choice and they are now today in hell. Are we together? I do not believe in being threatened or threatening people that if you do not give, God hates you, God is mad at you. The Bible does not reveal that. However, the Bible lets us know that there is something called the immutability of his counsel. That by the oath and the promise, let it be known that God does not lie. Are we together? And that by the surety that comes by the oath, that God himself swore by himself. He says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter that which is proceeded from my mouth. The ordinances of the kingdom do not dance or bend to prejudices and biases it is God's desire you are left with the option of choosing God's way and one of the mysterious ways by which we connect to the blessing in the kingdom is through giving 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 all kinds of giving giving by love giving with understanding from your worship offering your seed faith prophetic connections and all kinds of givings as I have taught there. I'm not going into that because 
There are still other serious things I want us to deal with. But ladies and gentlemen, Koinonia Global, listen to me. Let me speak to you from a standpoint of leadership, fatherhood, responsible spirituality. If you are not a giver, you will be poor. Write it down. If you are not a giver, you believe me. If you believe I love you with all my heart and you believe I will not lie to you, I am telling you this. I'm saying this because some of you are not givers and you are wondering why finances are not working for you. Sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, if you are not a giver, you will be poor. If you are an occasional giver, you will have occasional supplies. Giving is one of the mysterious spiritual forces that is responsible. I, I wish I had the time. This, this is a topic for next year, so I won't go in. Next year, there is a teaching that I have prepared called the giving grace. And I'm going to teach you why God mandates that believers give. One of the ways that believers give is to conquer, or the reason why God mandates people to give is to conquer idolatry, the worship of things. One of the ways why God tells believers to give, anytime you give a thing, it is because you have risen above it. Anything you cannot give, it is an act of worship. Your refusal to give it is a sign that it is above you. Are we together now? It's very important. Most people do not know why God asks us to give. He said, if I need anything, is it you I'm going to ask? God is the creator of the ends of the earth. There are people who never give. They say, I don't have. They never give. Not to God's program, not to the betterment of anyone, and yet their hands are ever open to receive. It does not work that way. I say it again, my dear people. If you do not give and give consistently, believe me by the integrity of scripture, you will be poor. Mysteriously poor. You may have your job running. You will be surprised that you will be poor. Do you know why? Because number one, you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior in your, of your heart. And that already you have drawn a battle line. The devil has a special interest in you. If you are an unbeliever, he still will attack you, but it's not priority. But now, by reason of being the believer yourself, are we together now? Oh, he will come to attack your finances for sure. There are many people who are not givers. Koinonia, some of you here, I need to teach you. Some of you have never given. You don't give. You don't give. Responsible Christianity builds and trains believers to understand giving from a standpoint of love and joy. One naira never leaves your account except it's for yourself. My food, my trouser, my transport, my fuel, gas, my house. Ah, that's fine. But any other thing, worst of the kingdom. And yet people roll and say, Lord, I love you with all my heart. There are believers when they are looking for contracts, when they are looking for all kinds of things, they don't mind emptying their accounts to buy all kinds of gifts and take it to someone who is human. And then the person says, oh, you came to see me. Drop the gift there. I'll see you after two months. And they say, thank you, sir. He didn't see you, didn't acknowledge the gift. And there are people who cannot come to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Can I tell you? I submit to you by the authority of scripture. This man you see standing before you, my life started not just with spirituality, but with giving. Today we stand by the privilege of God's grace, empowered to do what we do today on the strength of giving. And for all the days of my life, there is no 24 hour in my life that I don't give significantly. I'm not saying this to brag, it is the truth. It's, for me, it has become a lifestyle. To wake up in the morning and sleep in the night and not give? No. 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 I will go for a retreat. It means something is wrong. 
And don't think that when preachers speak like this or when people speak like this, it's because they have all the money in the world stash. Giving is an attitude. It's not about the availability of money. Are we together? I pray for you, the spirit of greed. There are preachers that don't give and keep envying others who are flying high. And many preachers, when they hear messages that challenge giving, they embrace it not because they like it, but because the message met lust that is already within there. I am a giver and I know what God has done in my life. Koinonia is a giving ministry and I know what God has done. There is no power in existence, no enchantment that can fight the finances of this ministry. I can tell you, it is by the Spirit of God, by engaging giving. You know how many people eat because God has kept us alive? Where is death going to come from? There are prayers of people that has built immunity against the waster. One mama somewhere who by the privilege of God's grace, we have gotten food to her, will stand on her feet and say, Lord, keep this man of God. This is the man feeding me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was eyes to the blind, Job said. There are many, many people just greedy around and thinking God blesses them. There is nothing that enters my hand. I wish I had the liberty to share some things. Many of you will not believe it. When resources enter my hand, God is my witness. The first thing in my mind is the kingdom, not myself. The kingdom, not myself. How many things can you eat? Honestly, how many things can you eat? The kingdom. Ah, this one now. What do we do with this now? Oh, the kingdom. Finally, this can go. This can go for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Every day and every week in this ministry, millions and millions fly around for various reasons. By the grace of God, it came by giving. You are seated today because of the power of giving. You are comfortable today we are able to teach you with integrity and not manipulating you because of giving. Make it as a kingdom responsibility. When God blesses you, have it at the back of your mind that giving is a covenant for all responsible believers. God honors it. If you have been giving out of ritual, stop, calm down, study it, have a revelation, then now give with understanding. Hallelujah. Yes. I give to fathers. I give to contemporaries. I give to senior colleagues. I give to sons and daughters, subordinates. I give to all men, Christians, non-Christians. I give. Giving is living. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You want to secure the enviable hand of God upon your life? Let giving provoke you. This is what brought the hand of God to Solomon. He offered a thousand bond offerings. I'm at a realm in my life right now where we're entering the zone of sacrificial givings. This is my business with God now as far as giving is concerned. He said, I will not give God anything that will not cost me nothing. I've shared with you and I'm saying it here on air. It was last year. It's been a long time since God gave me that instruction. I give always. It's my life. And I say it with joy and with no apologies. But last year, God would come to me and he gave a very heavy instruction. A sacrifice that Koinonia would give. And I said, Lord, it is you. I believe you. I know that every time you challenge people, it is because there's something good coming. I said to God, be the glory. So be it. And then the next instruction now comes to me. And the Lord said, what have instructed Koinonia to give? You give twice it. Let me tell you, no matter how rich you are, you will feel that. Believe me. Ah, I said, Lord, I've rolled on the ground many times to tell you, call me nanakane. Call me nanakane. Call me nanakane, ya Yesu. Yeshua Hamashiach, Koi Nanakane. Yeshua Hamashiach, Koi Nanakane. And I said, Lord, 
Is that it? I will not tell you the amount. But you use your mind. Ask God to tell you. And I said, Lord, if it is for you, what do I have? A man can receive nothing. Let me tell you the truth. When I dropped those seeds, I entered a dimension in the spirit. And even in my finances. Every instruction God gives the saints is not for his benefit. Let me say it again. Every instruction God gives the saints is not for his benefits. Many give foolishly. Many give blindly. What makes your giving powerful is not just releasing it. It's the revelation. The love for Jesus and the understanding of what you are doing. I remember when I released that seed. A, a level of peace. I have enjoyed the peace of God in my life. But this dimension of peace flooded me. And I said, this is it. Do you know what God can do over a man's finances? When God starts to wake people because of you, it will be as if you got something from a native doctor and put it in your back pocket that is causing this. My God, many believers don't know God. Oh. Do you know that your refusal to give is proof that you don't trust God? Please help them. Your refusal to give is proof that you do not trust God. Are we together? There is nothing in my life today I cannot give God. We rise by sacrifice. We rise by sacrifice. We rise by sacrifice. I wish I had the time to list for you certain sacrifices that I do every year, every period, my birthday period, now that Koinonia is done, there are moments in my life every year when you see God lifting some of us it's not just luck it's not just anointing there are practices there is blood dripping upon the altar are we together there's no point lying to you I'm teaching you this so that you will understand yes you can do business you can do all of these things but the spiritual root the spiritual root the spiritual root. Many people do not know how to connect to the realm of the spirit. When you walk alone, you will be slow. But when God holds your hands, you will fly. Which one is better? What you have by yourself is not even enough to take care of you. It cannot take care of you. My brother, how do you ever believe you are going to build a house now? Do you know? We were traveling somewhere and I was lamenting. We were discussing in the vehicle. I said, the way the world is now, the average young man, except God assist him, you will never build a house in your lifetime. I'm telling you. With dignity, oh, no. How much, do you know how much a house is now? Whether to buy or to build. I'm being realistic. To train children. Every other thing, you have three or four children. School fees now is running to the hundreds of the thousands and the millions. Cost of living. How much is a bag of rice? Minus the next two weeks now. And you don't want to steal. You don't want to kill. You don't want to prostitute yourself. You don't want to do ritual, um, money ritual. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know God's way, this is why many young men are getting frustrated now. They went to school, they paid the price, they are graduates, and whether they, they work or don't work is not showing in the finances. Even those who are doing well now, maybe you are the only lady doing well. There are 10 other people connected to you who are not doing well. So your 1 million per month is looking like 10 naira. By the time you tithe, and now this one happens, then the devourer comes to kill maybe your two or three brothers, and all the children now come to live with you. Satan for you. Please listen to what I'm telling you and find your way out of this misery that is plaguing the globe now. The, the number one secret is your spiritual root. Your spiritual root. I cannot afford to run my life and run koinonia, not verifying the assistance that comes from heaven. You can have a job and have five million naira. And all of a sudden, they tell you your heart has failed. And they say you need 8 million naira.
to do a bypass surgery and that's the end of it all that money you have gathered your business sense is still there but you're about to die and by the time you do, you survive it your life has gotten back to square one have you seen people who save for 30 years and spend that money in one month if God does not assist you you are only gathering to scatter is God speaking to someone now this is very important your tight is your spiritual insurance by understanding it is true your giving most people don't give most people do not give let me teach you something in the kingdom you give upwards to rise upwards when you want to rise financially giving by the side or giving down is wonderful but the way you go upwards in the kingdom is to give upwards I never as a principle and I say it to God's glory I never approach any of the fathers of faith with my hands empty no even if I bump into them I have to find a way to say ah look this and it's not a ritual it's not by compulsion it's by understanding do you know many years for those who have been in this ministry I struggled collecting seeds from people because I hate manipulation and so when people bring seeds I will just bless them and go I'll say Kai I don't I don't want all these people have manip pastors have manipulated people and I don't like it God just bless me bless the people one day during a retreat the Lord rebuked me and he said other people received your seeds and blessed you to rise higher if you stop receiving from these people and to speak a blessing on them they will remain at that level I repented before the Lord and I cried I said Lord grant me grace it's just a weakness of my personality till today I still struggle collecting money from people once I'm done counseling people or talking if I see people checking their bag or reaching out to their pocket it will be as if even when I go to preach today as 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 I am now I go to preach in a church or I go to preach in a place once I am done if I have my way, I almost want to run away. If I see the people calling me and I see someone holding a little uh, uh, hamper, if the, if the honorarium is food, I'll collect and eat and all of that. But once I see envelopes or whatever it is or asking for my account number, it's a weakness. Maybe you pray for me. Hallelujah. But even at that, God told me that if you reject, if you do not give these people, there is a grace on you. And I brought them to your life. I connected them to the ministry so that they can rise. And if you do not receive their seeds and speak blessings upon them, you will leave them low and it will be your fault. Everybody say giving. Listen to what I'm teaching you. May a cause rest upon me if I'm deceiving you and misleading you. You see, I love you too much to come here and waste your time. I'm showing you how this thing works in the kingdom. You ignore what I'm telling you and one day you will look back and say I would have listened. Is someone getting blessed? Spiritual laws. <laughs> Spiritual laws. When God begins to move over men, move over men. Stra and you don't have to be a man of God for this to work. So don't think it's because people know you on social media. No. Just because human beings know you does not mean they will bless you. God has given me instructions to bless people in Koinonia, people I do not even know. Sometimes I have to call the heads of department or call this and say, who is so, so, so person with this name? Ah, is this one. There are two of them. Who is this one? And the Lord will tell me, is this person? I say, okay, give me the person's account number. And the person does not even know. They will just be sitting down and because God instructed me to bless them. So don't tell me it's because I'm on stage. It's a lie. If you don't practice this, it will not work. It's as simple as that. There are many people who can help you and lift you. There are many people who have the wherewithal. But if the father of spirits does not speak to them, you will not get their attention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember some, some person one day who I, you got to reach me and said, Apostle, you don't know me, but A, B, C, D, I am this, this, and that person. The Lord put it in my heart to do this. I said, oh, really? What is it? When he told me what God put in his heart to do, I said, ah, but this life is not fair. What in the world is this? This man now has relatives, so 
He has relatives who are angry with him, cursing him every day, carrying his name to every shrine and say, Lord, this wicked man must give. And he left them and he was coming to look for a number of a man of God or a believer and now wants to begin to bless you in this and that manner. Whatever has deceived you, whatever has kept you greedy, that releasing and giving, whether to God or to his prophets or for whatever form of giving I'm praying for you with the heart of a father in the name of Jesus let that spirit live your life forever <laughs> Koinonia I have an assignment not just to see you spiritually vibrant but that by the grace of God you can rise to a life of dignity for God's sake a life of dignity number two let's hurry up we are going to pray because something is about to rest on you now. Something is truly about to rest on you. How wealth works. Number one, your spiritual roots. By practicing the spiritual laws, surrender, tithing, giving. Number two, are you ready? The second way wealth works is by engaging the law of value. The law of value. Koinonia, listen now. The law of value. Value and productivity is a very important component to becoming wealthy. Value is a measure of your usefulness to a people. Value is a measure of your usefulness to a community. Value is a measure of your usefulness to a person. Law of value. Your ability to provide solutions solutions that are needed and solutions that are useful if you're writing write that down solutions that are needed and solutions that are useful value is beyond your passion the assignment of your passion is not to give you money it can give you money but the assignment of passion is fulfillment not money there are many things you are passionate about that will not give you money but in doing them you will find fulfillment are we together there are many people who advocate, oh, look for your passion, make money out of it. You are joking. There are many things you are passionate about that the world does not need. You do it so that it is able to give you fulfillment. It is not just passion that gives you money. Very important, the law of value. Please listen. I have taught you here that the rewards that we receive in life and destiny is in direct proportion to the need for what we do, our ability to do what we do, and the difficulty in replacing us. If and when you are not valuable, you are going to be poor. I'm telling you this. There are many preachers who are prosperous, but they do not know why they are prosperous. What I am giving you now is value. I am not selling it, but it is still value. Are we together? Connecting you to faith, helping your understanding to live a, a, an effective Christian life holistically. It is value. And even though I am not selling it, God's laws will not change. Every time you dispense value, a reward will come eventually. Whether it is sold or it is given free. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Give. I'm giving now. Because I love Jesus and I love you. But it will be given unto me because it is a law. I don't have to receive where I gave, but I will receive what I gave. So I am giving you in Koinonia here, and the reward for what I'm doing now can be waiting for me even in another nation, and somebody will bless me. It is how it works. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen, everybody must be valuable. You must be an active contributor. What you call products and services are simply your value that you are now packaging to become products and services with excellence. Are we together? I'll talk about productivity shortly, but it's important. You must find something that you have that the world needs that they are willing to pay you for. It's important. Very important. I wrote something here, in fact. Write a list. Write a list of the things that people are willing to pay for. Most of you don't know what people are willing to pay for. If you don't know what people are willing to pay for, then you will never, 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 never be able to receive money under normal circumstances. What are people willing to pay for? Hallelujah. 
there are thousands of people on this ground outside all the overflows and after service most likely more than 60 percent to 70 percent of the people gathered here are going to eat before they sleep am i right on that there is a guarantee that by morning they will eat again by afternoon they will eat again by night they will eat again all through their lifetime what people are willing to pay for men must dress someone made what i'm wearing someone made what you're wearing someone will make what you wear tomorrow there is no day in your entire lifetime even when people die they bury them with clothes what people are willing to pay for your phone your phone gets missing and you become disoriented until you get a sim get another phone telecommunication companies make billions by the day what people are willing to pay for how about those who transported you from your house to bring you here there are hundreds of people waiting now after service to convey those who may not have their vehicles yet to take them back home and for every one of them you will pay for what people are willing to pay for every day is somebody's birthday what people are willing to pay for every day every week is someone's wedding are we together now we're stepping into the festive period what people are willing to pay for there is a 33 million housing deficit in nigeria 33 million housing deficit in abuja here by the privilege of god's grace sometimes when i want to help people maybe here and there their accommodation someone can get their accommodation and just before they pay for it you hear that someone else has come to pay for it because there is a housing deficit especially among young people who are starting what people are willing to pay for how about health who will not pay any amount to remain alive what people are willing to pay for are we together i'm giving you an example so that you don't just sit down and say there is nothing i can, I can do it's not true whoever believed that in a world where 70 percent of the world is immersed in water you still pay for water the one thing almost all of us pay for is water any nation anywhere we pay for water you are paying for the one of the most abundant resources on earth you pay for water you pay for land the only thing we don't pay for yet is air hallelujah did you hear what i said yet hoping that we are not careless with our environment until it becomes polluted and we start selling air bring what is only for ICU patients and it now becomes for rich people because the world has become polluted by the selfishness of people ladies and gentlemen you know you are valuable by who is willing to follow you if nobody is following you is a report card that you are not valuable or valuable enough as a man of God as an individual who is following you and willing to pay for what you can do are we together it is amazing ladies and gentlemen that when you become valuable it does not guarantee that you'll be wealthy no but that value already puts you in a position of advantage because now you are ready to move to the next level called productivity productivity the law of value talks about discovering the solutions that you can bring to people but productivity is the art of packaging your value and turning it into products and services listen carefully productivity is different from value value talks of discovery productivity talks of packaging refining your value there are many people who can sew many people who can sing but nobody can pay them for it the reason is because it's still at the realm of value they are not yet productive are we together productivity 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 and then the next law that I'll talk about very quickly is the law of excellence this one is a very serious one this is what separates men from boys in the world of value and so on and so forth excellence this is very important most believers are poor and mediocre because they are not excellent 
there are brands that when I mention, what is the difference between some construction brand that you know and you respect and an ordinary mason who is willing to build your house? If you have the money to, even if it's your brother that is the architect and the mason, you will most likely not invite him. Why? You would rather invite some construction company that has some reputation. What are you inviting? You are inviting their brand, a testimony of consistency, integrity, and excellence. Please look up. Everybody buys excellence, not just things. Excellence. Excellence. Most church people are not excellent. I've had the honor of traveling a bit and I've been to many places and many facilities. Believers are not excellent people. You can almost know a facility that was built by a believer because you will see it laced with carelessness. You are using a bathroom, the water is coming back to you as you are bathing. Believers for you. Say amen. You look at a sink and open the, the part, you open cold water and it's hot water that is coming on you because the, the labelings were wrong. They put the blue one for, for cold water up, I mean, and interchange them. So you just burn your, just because you want to wash your hands and somebody does not care. Are we together? Believers are not excellent. Give believers contract and most of, I know things are changing, but I need to challenge. Most believers get angry. Oh, why church people are not doing this? I can do this thing that people are doing. And you give them something and watch the way they disappoint you. And then they say, are you not a Christian? You should not be angry. You should, this is the fruit of the spirit. is love, joy, and, and so on and so forth. Please listen to what I'm telling you and take it seriously. You enter a restaurant that is owned by some unbeliever somewhere, there is excellence, there is courtesy, all that greeting you will pay for it, but at least they will charge you and you will pay for it. There's excellence, but not Christians. You step in and the person to greet you is there yawning, folding his arm, gossiping, and while you come, hey, I, okay, you can see that I'm coming. They will now go and on the generator. That will take time. You are already sweating and angry. And the person who is coming to serve you is frowning as if this face is familiar. So what? Say excellence. Please shout it. Say excellence. excellence. There, are, there are many people in Abuja here. Some of you are my dear people listening to me. It's not that you cannot, you, you have something to do, but you are not excellent. You cannot dress kings. Someone cannot give you something to fix. You spoil it again and bring it back. Excellence is the determination to surpass ordinary standards. Everybody who has the money to give you is looking for a standard. If you can meet that standard, you will enter your financial Sabbath. Believe me, there are people in Nigeria who only sew for kings. Fashion people. And it's not because they were that way. They were so exceptional. All it takes is for one great person. And that one is God's assignment to bring the great people. Oh, this is what you make? Wow, this is exceptional. Let me tell all my friends that I found somebody. And in one moment, they will not even ask you, how much do you sow? They will just give you five million and say, sow whatever you can sow. Let's test you. That is testing, five million. You, if they had asked you, you would have said it's 40,000 per one. Now they gave you, they, because they saw your excellence and they believed. They just jump-started your mindset. And from that level, you will not do any sewing less than one million again because excellence brought you here. Are we together now? Believers, please listen. Excellence. Tomorrow, go back to whatever it is you are doing. Clean the place. Make it healthy. Make it exceptional. You are a business person. Don't let, let me give you something. If a, a big idea. If God gives you an opportunity to do something you don't have capacity to do, don't preserve the name and let someone else take the profit. You did not lose. Did you hear what I said? Preserve the name, the track record, and give somebody who will do an excellent job. A good name is better than profits. 
if they give you a contract of 100 million and honestly it's just favor, prophecy came and favor, instead of damaging that thing, you lose the profit and you lose your name. Bring someone who is competent. Even if the person is greedy and wants to take everything, you preserve the name. The name will recycle the opportunity again. Hallelujah. I made up my mind as a man of God. Now listen, let me tell you this. I do ministry with the heart of a shepherd, but I have the brain of a businessman. A businessman not because I'm all out for money, no. Everywhere I go to minister, I see what I'm serving the body of Christ as the gospel, but I also see it as a product. Everything I say is going to be a, is going to affect and influence the life of millions of people. And so I do my homework. I make sure that if I ever stand on this stage or any stage, I'm communicating as much as I can, intelligent, life-applicable principles. That is the reason why I listen to my own messages, every message. I listen to be blessed by what God has said through me, but I also listen to learn and see areas of improvement. Ah, these statistics that I brought is now outdated. Correct it. Next time you're on stage, you correct it. Are we together? Yes. There are times that I preach and people listen to me and with, with every sense of love, sometimes they send as, ah, apostle, you spelled this this way or you pronounce this this way. This is how it is. Can you improve yourself? I don't say, who, who is this stupid person? Mm -mm. I'm passionate about excellence and I'm not ashamed of my limitations. I learn, improve myself and I come back to correct myself a more superior version. Say excellence. Receive the grace to hate mediocrity. Yeah. Are we together? There are many believers who say, I can cook. Cook what? For who? Because be mindful of the person whose money you want to collect. You want his money, but does the person like you? Does he want your service? Are we together now? Do you know there are people just this December alone, they will make in excess of 10 million packaging hampers. I'm not exaggerating. In excess of 10 million. There are hampers that are almost 1 million, 2 million, depending on what you put there. And someone can order 30 just to use it and honor those who have blessed them. And it will go to one person. Whereas someone else is praying and say, God, when will you come for me? And God is saying, okay, let's be honest. If I give you this thing now, you will break two people's relationship because of lack of excellence. Put something that is meant for women in a package they told you is for a man because there's no excellence. Hello, Koinonia. Believers for you. Let us not make it look like it is a cause for us to love Jesus. Loving Jesus does not take away your brain. Please go and sit down. Whatever you cannot do well, Challenge yourself and then surround yourself with sincere people who can love you but tell you the truth. Don't surround yourself with mediocres that will always tell you this is exceptional. If you come here and you sing, my precious people, if you didn't do well, they can pat you and say, well done, eh? but ah, the way you did this and that. Don't just say it was excellent. No, if it was not excellent, it was not excellent. It's as simple as that. You made pounded yam that is looking like Gary. The soup, people do not know whether it's draw soup or it's not draw because everything there, you are confusing the people. Go back and be excellent. Yes, it is the will of God to lift you, but not in that state. Which king will you serve with that kind of thing? And it's the kings that have the money to give you. I hope you are not just laughing. Yes. It is my desire to see that I serve kings. Men of God, let me challenge you with all due respect. There are certain people who will never come and sit down under your ministry until you rise to a certain level of excellence. Excellence in delivery. Nobody will carry his wife and children of noble repute and come and sit down. Watch the people that came for Jesus' program because they knew that they would hear something that is life applicable, intelligently presented with a point of application. Many believers lack excellence, but we want everything 
to work out well. You buy a rubber plate from a believer, it's already bent before it gets home. Because it was so poorly done in a bid to compromise on standards. No. I'm challenging believers. Money flows every day. But it flows from those needing excellence to those who serve excellence. It will jump those who are not interested. Those who do not respect excellence. Hallelujah. How do you know you are excellent? Whenever you are called, when kings arrive. Every time kings arrive and you are called, is because you are excellent. Yes, sir. Some great man is coming and you are the one who is contacted. Please come. Excellence. Apostle, I do interior decoration. People marry every day. Now, it used to be every week. Now it's even every day. People marry on Monday, Tuesday because they don't want trouble. They marry on Wednesday when there's nobody. They marry in their homes. Not even, they just look for somewhere and they bless them. But there are people who do interiors who have not done more than two this year. I'm not insulting you. There are demonic attacks. Yes, I know. But there are people who are just not excellent. It's as simple as that. Let me tell you this. If you want to be excellent, allow people higher than you to do a critique of what you are doing. If you mark your scripts by yourself, you will give yourself A. You are the teacher and you are the student. It doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. One more law, and then we'll find somewhere to pray. I will talk about one major thing. Are you ready? The law of relationships. The law of relationships. Koinonia. Relationships. 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 This is one of the mysterious systems by which God frustrates our journey to being wealthy. Relationships. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 13 20 he that walketh with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed my life would change radically when i learned the value and the power of strategic relationships i have taught you on relationships extensively and i don't intend to go back into it but i'm just hoping and praying as God put this burden in my heart, my dear people, that you will believe that who likes you can redefine your financial destiny. Who hates you does not matter. No. You will always have naysayers. But who likes you can redefine your financial destiny. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people who have been elevated overnight because someone liked them relationships are powerful 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 when people when you learn to relate with people they invite you into their world they invite you into their space genesis chapter 12 when you read from verse 2 to 4 i like verse 4 verse 3 says and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed go to verse 4 now it now says so abraham in response to the, the instruction he got from God, as the Lord had spoke, as spoken, he departed and Lot went with him. I like this scripture. Lot was not called by God to walk with Abraham. Lot just saw a man who God had blessed. Please keep that scripture, verse 4. The Bible says, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Go to verse 13 and verse 1 for sake of time. 13 and 1. And Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. Verse 2. And Abraham was very rich. Why? Because he obeyed God. The God factor. Rich in cattle, silver, and gold. 3. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And the Bible says, And there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. Read verse 5 with me, please. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. I have shared it here that it's important for you to know whether you are Abraham or Lot. 
not everybody will be Abraham, but everybody can partake on, of what God told Abraham. If you are Lot, master relationships. I have told you, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest way to maintain relationships is gratitude. If you cannot be a contributor to that relationship by bringing value, lavish that relationship with gratitude. Ingratitude will destroy great opportunities from your life. Hallelujah. There are businessmen who did contracts once and they refused to say thank you to all those who played a role. And I'm not just talking of giving things, acknowledging the contribution of men to your life. Nobody will leave you if people know that they feel at home, they feel loved, they feel honored around you. Hallelujah. Relationships, very powerful mystery. Powerful mystery. You don't remember anybody's birthday? You don't remember anybody's anniversary? And these are people who matter to you? You hear that someone who helped you before just lost his mother and father? You don't care? Even when they tell you, you just say, okay, may God help them. Everybody dies. And then later on, you now come and say, I'm hoping and trusting that God will use. The person you ignored just becomes the chairman of a board. Do you know there are things that can be so easy if the people who are there like you? The memory of your kindness to them. There are people who have risen to strategic positions today. And with all due respect, some of them reach me and say, Apostle, please, if you need any help or anything in this area, I am just a call away. Whether it is for you or for someone else, I remember what you have done for me. I remember what you have done for us. And this is our opportunity to see what we can do. I'm praying for you. May God connect you. I know that you should be connected to everybody, but I'm praying a personal prayer for you. May God connect you to a wealthy person. Yeah. Honestly, it is from my heart. If you don't believe it, no problem. You can say amen to the rest, the remaining prayers that I'll pray. But I'm praying to, from my heart. May God connect you to a wealthy person. Yeah. Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. He interpreted the dream of the baker, but he still remained in prison because the baker had no power to help him. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He remained in prison, had no power to help him. But when he interpreted Pharaoh's dream, he came out immediately from prison. It matters who you serve. God can call you into certain circles using just one relationship. When I pray that you'll be friends with a wealthy man, it's not because of the money. It is a realm of reality that one person can bring you and everybody within that level will begin to deal with you the way that man dealt with you. This is the advantage. I'm not saying you should go around following wealthy people. It's God that makes it happen. The easiest way to prosper is through relationships. Write it down, please. The easiest way to prosper financially is by connection. By connection. Through relation. Please believe me. The easiest way to prosper. There are people who are not as smart. There are people who are not as knowledgeable. There are people who do not know half the things that I'm saying. But they are multi-billionaires. Simply because of relationships. They maintain relationships. They maintain strategic connections. I think it was Dr. Mudok who said that statistics shows that everybody is only four people away from his helper. All over the world. The person God has destined to help you. There is somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows that person. Life is as difficult as the relationships that are missing in your life. Let me say it again. Life will be as difficult as the relationships that are missing in your life. One more time. Life will be as difficult as the relationships that are missing in your life. Relationships were designed by God to close destiny gaps. And if there are gaps in your destiny that relationships have not closed, you will find out that it can prolong your journey. Relationships. How do you maximize relationships? 
One, by praying that God brings the right people to your life. Two, by becoming a person of character so that when God brings those people to your life, they will not see you as a cause to their destiny. Did you hear what I said? That you maximize relationships. Go and get my message, Opening Destiny Doors Through Relationships. I recommend it highly. Opening Doors Through Relationships. It's important. I teach extensively there on how to manage relationships. The way you manage someone who does not have money is different from the way you manage somebody who has money. While that is an uncomfortable truth, it is a truth. The law of relationships. If you forget anything I taught in this discussion today and you remember this one man, this one man of God, you will be surprised that it is relationships that will bring the partners who will stand with you. Are we together? I know people today who are doing great things for the kingdom and they are not more than three or four people that God just connected them to. They just said, sir, you just keep doing ministry with integrity. We are the pillars, financial pillars behind you. We believe in this vision. We believe in you. And for as long as we are alive, we'll see to it that you and the vision keeps making progress. So you'll see that they don't really do anything as you will say. But there are strong financial pillars that have been maintained through relationships. Don't find yourself insulting people, insulting every great man, insulting your uncles, insulting your aunties, insulting someone whose help you need. If you insult someone whose help you need, including your boss, you will be doing yourself a disservice. Do you know why? Make reference to my teachings, lessons from an overcomer. Because in the world of the great, they are largely surrounded by psychophants. Let me teach you something. The world of the great, most of the subordinates around great people are largely psychophants, especially in the corporate world. So everybody is trying to market themselves as saints. And the way they do it is by tearing down others. And if you become the one who makes yourself a scapegoat by tearing your superiors in the presence of your contemporaries, when they get to your superiors, they will use what you have said as a ladder to climb and get favor from them. This is a secret most people don't know. Because everybody is trying to win the attention of the CEO. Everybody is trying to win the attention of the director, the GMD. And someone will say, director, I need to tell you something. I know I'm a junior staff, but please, be careful with this lady. She told me something that, will you allow me to say it? And the man will say, say it, let me hear. <laughs> Are we together? Oh, this lady said this and that and that and that. And the man says, really? Can you prove it? Yes. All right. That's okay. May God bless you. Then the lady just comes. Oh, sir, how are you? And says, let this be the last time. What happened? And you see people come and say, somebody who used to like me before, he stopped liking me. They had something you could not manage. They will not tell you, but you have betrayed trust. You have betrayed something. Are we together now? Yes. The man called you and gave you $1,000 because he had your mother was sick. And he said, take this $1,000. Go and help mama, but be careful. And you went around, everybody, if you are doubting who the boss likes in this office, I'm the one. Who else can hold $1,000? The goodness of God through my boss. And someone says, ah, but I just told this man my own mother died too. And before you know it, the man will hate you and make sure they bring you out of that company. There are battles that are unnecessary. Wisdom. Are we together now? Yes. So many believers have put themselves in positions where they have lost favor because they did not know how to manage people. You follow your boss to a meeting, a board meeting where you see the who's and who's there. And just because of the privilege of his bringing you, you sit down somewhere and hear a discussion that you should never have heard. And while you are hearing it, you bring out your phone and you are recording and you are snapping them and sending it to your friends and say, you can't believe I'm in the presence of this guy. Can you imagine? Ah, bros, we'll talk, we'll talk later on. Just And you are happy. And before you know it, the unwise person will now put it on social media and say, see what the Lord is doing to my brother. And that's the end of it. I'm teaching you wisdom. 
Oh, who put this on social media? Is so, 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 and so. Who did this? Who recorded the conversation? Who did this and that? It is that boy you brought. And immediately, both you and your boss lose favor. And because a man lost favor, he will hate you. Even if he's your relative, he will say, never come to my life again. And may God help them to not see a false prophet. You see, I told you, this person that you brought. If any of you have made any mistake like this, and it has shut the door of favor. You came for Koinonia tonight. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy, let the mercy of God rewrite your story now. I say it again, let the mercy of God rewrite your story now. Whenever God takes you to the table of greatness and you meet the great, be wise. One of the most expensive commodity on the table of greatness is information. Know how you manage information of great people. You will lose great relationships. Some of you will thank me for this. If you are a PA here, either a PA or a protocol to anybody or perhaps a, um, maybe an aide, I'm giving you a wise counsel, both spiritual and professional. Your edge in working with great people will be your ability to make them feel at ease in your presence, to manage information. Drivers, those who walk around homes, they have been the reason why armed robbers have come to attack great people. They have been the reason why great people have lost favor because they did not know how to keep quiet. He says, set a guard over my mouth. There's someone here, this for you is what you came to hear in Koinonia because the greatest demon is not the one in your village. It's this thing you see in front of your face. Most of us, your mouth has destroyed you. You have destroyed, there is nothing your ears hear that your mouth will not say. Hallelujah. I, I had something, oh. And now I know why August's wife is not pregnant. I was hearing something on phone. Ah, we will talk. I have something to tell you. And God is watching. And CCTV is watching too. Are we together now? Yes. And before you know it, you carry all kinds of things and lose favor. I'm praying for you again. The grace to keep quiet is a remarkable grace. May God give you that gift. Hallelujah. Someone calls you and tells you, listen, oh, this estate you see is my own. But um, I, I've, I feel like blessing your family with one of the homes. And they just bless you and that's the end of it. You go around the estate with a video on your phone. You are snapping around and saying, this one, as I'm saying here, this is the estate of so, 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 and so, and so person. And I'm even here just to let you know what God can do. Can you imagine that this is my house? It will happen for you in Jesus' name. And you see, until you rise to the level of the great, you will not know the consequences of your carelessness. If you are not great, you will cheapen the... So what is there? But until you rise before you see that that one thing you have done, you have destroyed 10 relationships because of one careless statement. Oinonia is quiet. The law of relationships. Learn this, so it is very important. When people grant you access to greatness, protect it, preserve it, protect it. Never get too familiar, protect it, preserve it. Some of you, when you come into the place of the great, all you are interested in doing is taking advantage of those who brought you there and collecting phone numbers of people you, not, you wouldn't have had access to. And then by evening, you are disturbing them. I'm that guy that came with this man. And they say, uh -huh. so what can, how can I help you? Sorry, yo, I didn't want to say it there. I don't know you. I've been seeing you around on TV. Can you give my mother a house? Can you give my brother a house? Can you do this? You won't believe. You think I'm just joking. It is amazing the kind of abuses of relationships that go on in our world and even among church people. They take advantage of opportunities and they destroy their relationships and destroy the relationship of others because of carelessness. Hallelujah. Yes. As a principle, one of the things I do, if I step into a place of great people, generally, and someone wants to sow into my life, usually I would even let sometimes my host, 
look at this that this man wants to do. And they say, oh, no, 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 no problem. I am very protective of relationships that I value because I know that it took people a huge price to get to that level. Don't disrespect their sacrifices by introducing your carelessness to destroy their relationships. I will never go to another man's church, for instance, and preach and collect phone numbers of strategic people, partners, and say, go and meet me later on. No. My job is to come and bless the people, bless them with all my heart. Whatever it is, if there is anything they bring, I thank God for it, and I'm on my way going. Never abuse relationships. I will repeat this again. Never abuse relationships. There are people today, with all due respect, and I'm saying it to the glory of God, how they got my number, I do not know. You cannot imagine the abuses that happen. They can call you by 12 or 1 or 2 and say, just to verify, is this apostle first? Before they, I mean what I'm saying. Abuses here and there. And usually it is because of someone who had access to the number that was careless and bragged about it. I have apostle's number. Trust me. Oh yeah, let me give you. Are we together? Not that there's anything special in us per se, but there, are, there is a protocol to relationships. Oh, come for Koinonia. There's one big man that can help people. That director, he's around in Koinonia. Just wait. So this is the plan. We we'll sit down there. The man usually sits there. One service is done. Just run and go to the person. And abuses happen. And people don't. They think because it is church, it is a place for abuses. No, no. You don't like what I'm saying, but I love you. You will prosper. Don't worry. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to keep and protect relationships. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to keep and to protect relationships. You lose relationships. You lose a lot in your life. The easiest way, according to scripture, I know to prosper, believe me, is relationships. There are people today by the mercies of God, because of my connection to them, they will never beg for bread again till they see Jesus' face. Relationships. That is the advantage. There are children today that God brought to my life by reason of that connection. I have vowed under God that for as long as I'm alive, until these children rise, grow, school, become established, I will keep holding them and their families financially. Relationships. Hallelujah. So someone may not learn the 10 principles, 15 principles, may not go to Yale and Oxford and Harvard, and God says, I want to fast track your life. And the one thing God does is to just introduce you to a strategic relationship that is equal to a 20 years period of learning. Don't abuse it. With it comes a big secret that can help your finances. Let me give you the last key and then we'll wrap up. This one is a very big one. Pray in the spirit in one minute. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 2. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Hallelujah. Now, there is one key. This, for many people who God has started helping, is the major reason. And I won't talk much about this, unfortunately. But I need to introduce you to it. The major reason behind the financial up and down of believers, especially those that God has started helping, this secret right here, is what if you do not understand you will never be wealthy never ever be wealthy this is what turns you from a rich person to a wealthy person the Bible says give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth we'll look at it in a number of versions give us NIV then NLT and finally good news GNT give us NIV it says, give portions to seven and yes to eight, for you do not know the disaster that may come in the land. Let's look at NLT. It says, divide your investments among many places, for you know not what risks might lie ahead. Can we? Yes, good news. I like this. Watch this now. 
Put your investments in several places. Koinonia, wake up now. Many places even because you never know what kind of bad luck you are going to have in this world. Look up. The only way money grows and the only way money multiplies is through investments. Write it down. The only way money grows and the only way money multiplies is through investments. If you do not understand investments, you will never be wealthy. Unfortunately, these kinds of platforms don't give us the liberty because you are speaking with people and because you are speaking on financially related subjects and with it comes many, many things, unfortunately. But let me tell you this. You must learn and master investments if you want to be wealthy. A job can give you a salary. You can have salary saved with time and have some money. Providing value like I taught you can connect you to a clientele and all together they can give you some money. Some of us, as I'm speaking to you now, it God, it's not like God has not been faithful. There is something lying there. But what to do with it is what most people do not know. It's the reason why they keep going up and keep going down. There is nobody who is sustainably wealthy on earth, whether in the secular or in the church. There is no ministry, listen carefully, that is sustainably wealthy on earth that has ignored investments. No. Those days when we were growing, most of the churches in the north, beyond having their assemblies, almost all of them had schools, they had hospitals, they had retreat centers, and for a long time, I, I didn't know why they had to do that. That everywhere the churches were founded within the states, with all due respect, you also see this in many, many what we call our orthodox circles. You will see schools, you will see restaurants, you will see hospitals, and you are wondering why these things have to be there. Eventually, I will understand that the truth is that, please listen, in ministry today, just depending on tithes and offerings will leave you begging forever. COVID taught many people a lesson. As wonderful and tight as tithes and offerings are, people are growing and it takes time for people to grow. It takes time for the word of God to speak over their lives. It's the reason why many sincere laborers in the kingdom are going through a lot of financial tension. There are many people who God has been faithful. They collect salaries, 200,000, 500,000, a million plus for 10 years. They have money stashed in the bank for years, 10 years, 15 years. That money is there because they do not understand investments. It does not grow. Unfortunately, I submit to you that the understanding of investments for the average African, the average Nigerian and the average church person is very, very small. Is the reason why people part away with their monies, making poor investment decisions. Is the reason why many people are in financial troubles this moment as I speak. Because they have to make do with whatever information is available. And most of it is full of all kinds of things. And people get into all kinds of trouble. But rest your mind on this. That when God shows you faithfulness financially, your next project is to settle down and learn everything you can on investments. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. By the time you create systems, they are called, you have entered a realm called oceanic wealth. It's a realm that the Bible calls the wealthy place. You see that now. Apply to be part of School of Ministry next year, hopefully. You have a chance to learn in more detail a few things about finances, investments. Most believers, I wish I had the liberty to talk a lot more on investments, but this is important. Have this at the back of your mind. The believer who cannot invest, who does not know how to invest, is the believer who cannot perpetuate wealth. For many reasons, there's no liberty to teach this in most detail in church because financial issues are very delicate issues and you are talking to a global audience. Are we together? And there has to be disclaimers when you teach on finances because if people act on your financial advice and get into trouble, you can land in court, they can sue you. So because of that, preachers are not at liberty even when they know how to guide. 
they are not at liberty to be elaborate beyond these kinds of states. But I'm just telling you, go and read up on investments. And let me give you a strong advice. Never release your money until you understand what you are doing. Never. It's better to keep the money there and let it not grow. Don't carry your money and just throw around because you hear that this is happening, that is happening. Believers again are careless people. Just because someone talks to you and is crying does not mean that you, your money is safe. Investments. There are business people today who don't invest. There are people who have had 10 million lying down for years. They've not been able to invest. 100 million naira is lying there. They don't invest. Whereas somebody, do you know in Abuja here, just a few years ago, there were properties that were going lands for 400,000, a million naira. There are people who carry 10 million and bought 10. Now one of those properties is not less than 60 million or 100 million. Say investments. And it's not like they were really very smart. They just were able to go ahead of time and to do that. There are some parents today, they did not have financial intelligence. But the one thing they did was to be able to go and buy some serious plots of land. And they kept it. They bought some of those lands for less than 100,000. Even in your Abuja here. And some of those lands right now are in the hundreds of millions. And all the person would do is to just sell one and train his whole children to school. Give a portion to seven, year to eight. For you do not know the calamity or the disaster that shall come upon the earth. I found this secret in my own life and I prayed and studied everything I could study. Because I do not want to live a life of compromise because of finances. I have told you and I stand before the God of heaven. I have never preached for money and I will never preach the gospel because of money. God has blessed me through preaching. I cannot deny that. But it has never been my motivation. God sent me to speak to someone because I will be sharing with you hopefully in the last service. I'm not a prophet of doom. And I, 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 as I respect God and I respect myself and I respect your trust for me. So if I stand here and I tell you things, especially I'm prophesying, I make sure that I know what I'm saying. I saw something about next year that will make you need this message because what I saw is going to be a time of turbulence and serious challenge for believers. I'm not a prophet of doom. My teaching grace is enough for me like that. I mustn't prophesy. But if I open my mouth and I tell you something, you just believe it. So don't ignore when you see God bring things like this. He's redeeming the future. There is something he has seen. You see that now. I saw many, many, many people folding their companies and people, both father and mother, losing jobs at the prime, not even knowing what to do. PTA meetings happening and teachers are saying, you cannot drive our children. Why don't you structure the payment? When I saw that thing, my heart, I said, God, what is the meaning of this? When God shows things like this, it's not to put fear but he's showing it so that believers can be prepared. Now you have something on ground. God has shown you mercy. I wish I had the time I would have taught you on financial carelessness. There are people who are going to spend everything God gave them this December and then suffer by January. Hear this servant of God, don't. There is nowhere written in the Bible that if you don't eat cow and chicken, you will not commemorate the birth of Jesus. Live a modest and a decent life within your means. Are we together now? Remember the dream of Joseph. Seven years of plenty. Seven, if you have the money, fine. You, God bless you. But for many of us who, especially those that the year has been rough, there is a mindset people have that once it is Christmas, burn everything you have. Finish all the money. Live a fake and a false life. Carry your family and go around the world and then return back and suffer. That's not a wise bargain. For someone, God is helping you to now begin to be frugal. Another thing I would have thought about is, is living a fake life. One of the major reasons, a fake life is very expensive. Write it down. A fake life is very expensive. It takes so much to fund a fake life. 
and once you start you must maintain it a fake life is very expensive if you are not there you are not there you can start gradually with the dignity of kingdom integrity a fake life is expensive don't try to buy a car that is not yet your level don't try to go and live in a house that is not yet your level. You are living in a house that you are owing three years rent now. You can't pay back. It's a sign you are not yet there. Get out of that place and look for a decent place. Hallelujah. There are some of us who do not yet have the means to start gathering people and celebrating elaborate birthdays, elaborate occasions. No, be patient. God is bringing you there. Even for schools, as much as I would want you to educate your children at the highest level, you must be wise and keep them within your budget. Find the best school that your budget can afford. If your child is on scholarship, that is fine. Otherwise, find the budget, the school that your budget can afford. But by all means, Koinonia, please hear me. Great disaster is going to befall many. And there are many who will begin to tour the corridors of compromise because of this finance thing. I shall not want, it's not just a prophetic declaration. It is a declaration that comes with responsibilities. And the responsibility is learn all you can. Now that God has given you a good job, don't waste your salary that is coming. Learn all you can about investments. Are we together now? meet intelligent people with integrity who know what they are saying not people playing games all around playing games all around the internet deceiving and fooling people don't fall prey to some of these things seek counsel there are five kinds of investment you must make in your life number one is your spiritual investment number two investment in your mind let me give you this and then we'll wrap up five kinds of investment Number one, your spiritual investment. When I talk of investments, I'm not just talking of putting money. Your relationship with Jesus is a potent investment that has returns, even financial returns. Number two, mental investments. What you store in your mind is there. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. It is there and will always be ready to be delivered when needed. Number three, invest in your health. And your well-being is an investment invest in your health and your well-being it's often said that people deteriorate their health to make money then they use the money they have made to now maintain their health that is now deteriorated don't be like that invest in your health and your wellness number four invest in strategic relationships relationships are an investment they bring returns mighty marvelous returns they bring returns. I shared a story in Ghana that I want to share as I wrap up. A wealthy man had a son. He had a son and this son lived a very careless and a riotous life and the man got sad and said, I will never give you anything of my estate. And he called the servant and he told the servant, you have been a well-behaved person. I give you the liberty to choose anything you want to choose. And the servant chose the estates, chose the cars, chose some of the businesses, and chose everything. And while he was choosing, the man was touched with compassion. And then he said, are you done choosing? The servant said, yes. Then he looked at his son. He said, for mercy's sake, I will allow you to choose only one thing and get out of my way. And the son said, I choose the servant. Did you get the story? I choose what a wise boy I choose the servant means that I chose the car the servant chose I chose the house that belongs to the servant everything why am I saying this there are certain things when you find you have found other things too relationships there are certain things when you find you have found all other things there are things that you truly may not need to bother about again when you get the majors in life because the majors control the minors for instance your relationship with jesus for instance your relationship with men for instance the power of the holy ghost now we're going to pray that song power to prosper we're going to sing it once twice and then i will pray for you that the hand of god will rest upon your head 
the hand of God will rest upon your hand the hand of God will rest upon your feet rise up on your feet coin on you rise up on your feet don't be distracted sing it once twice go ahead let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me. point tonight and I speak over your life father in light of all that I've heard cause me to walk in these truths and then let your power to prosper truly come upon me go ahead and pray go ahead and pray remember I told you that financial prosperity is a composite of many factors laws and principles human relational factors supernatural empowerment then the God factor. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Father, visit me. Visit my family. The law of absolute surrender. Tithes, offerings. And all kinds of givings. The law of value. The law of productivity, the law of excellence, the law of relationships, understanding investments. These are some of the keys. Then the power to prosper, the divine enablement that comes upon your mind, empowering your thinking, empowering ideas, empowering creativity, witty inventions. The anointing coming upon your hand, causing the works of your hands to be blessed. Extraordinary excellence and productivity. The anointing coming upon your feet, bringing you direction, bringing you guidance. And Isaac sowed in that land, that land, that land, that land. Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. You will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hopefully in another meeting when we have the time, I will share with you a bit of the God factor in the finances of men. In every man's destiny, a day will come when you will experience something along the lines of your finances that only God can bring. It can happen once only in your lifetime. Just once. Just once. If you are not positioned to discern, there are people today, their rising is absolutely the God factor. God came, they discerned, they maximized the moment, and they stepped into a very supernatural dimension. I want to speak over your life. Beyond doing business, God can help men. The prophetic can help people prosper. I want you to believe it. As I speak over your life, you will be surprised to see what I... Let me tell you the truth. I am a man that God has helped. I know what it means to be helped by God. 
and I want somebody to experience that dimension of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, you place this in my heart to teach your people to help them to know that lack and want is a curse and that it can come out of the believer's life whilst he's serving the Lord with the dignity of integrity, passionately loving and serving Jesus. I stretch my hands over those who are here on site, the many who are following online. In the name of Jesus, the God factor that is responsible for lifting men, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. See the hand of God in your finances. I pray for you. See the marvelous hand of God in your finances. May God put it in the heart of men, even strangers, to locate you and bless you so mightily. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you. You are in business and the difficulty is connecting to those who need what you carry. By prophecy, this moment, I connect you in the name of Jesus. You are in this place and you are trusting God for a job. It looks like doors have not been opened for you. You've not even started because the way to begin to schedule a reward system is not there. I'm praying for you. May this year not end without you receiving your letter. I'm praying for anyone here who is in debt. You borrowed money, you are in trouble. Your family is in trouble. I pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, between now and December 31st, come out of that financial situation. I pray for someone. You made careless financial decisions. You lost your money. Maybe you put it somewhere, it disappeared. Someone ran away with your money or some stories. I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, may God the Restorer restore you. 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 For those who are not tithing, those who are not giving, that spiritual root is not there. The giving grace, I release it upon you right now. I call your destiny helpers. I don't know where they are, but in the name of Jesus, you will not have to look for them by yourself. God will bring them to you. I say it again, you will not have to look for them by yourself. My God will bring them to you. May this be true for ministries. May this be true for churches. May this be true for families. May this be true for individuals. Some wealthy person who is looking for someone to bless, may God put your name in their heart. And I want to pray for those who are already established. God is helping you. You have businesses, you have investments. You have structures here and there that meet needs. I'm praying for you. You will not fail in business. I'm praying for you. You will not lose your job. God will only take you higher and higher. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to shout, I shall not want three times. Just obey prophetic instructions. I'm going to count one, two, three. And you will shout, I shall not want, I shall not want, I shall not want. It's a prophetic word. You are declaring to the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. From the simplicity of this instruction, you will be surprised at the testimonies that will return. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I shall not want. Number two. Number three. As you have declared it in the name of Jesus, may my God make it happen in your life. May my God make it happen in your life. May my God make it happen in your life. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. 
Now, please let me have everybody's attention before I make the altar call. I want to make three very important announcements. I want to have your attention before you begin to move around. Number one, just announcing the Koinonia Workers Appreciation Dinner for Abuja will be coming up this Thursday. A Workers Appreciation Dinner, Thursday the 9th of December. The dress code is decent native. The key word is decent. Decent native. We are believers. Are we together? Decent native. I'm told that it starts, red carpet starts by 4 p.m. The venue is right here. So please, um, red carpet, 4 p.m. Dinner proper starts 6 p.m. on the dot. So all workers, please prepare. Make sure we're here on Thursday. And then just to run through the program for Zaria. Next week, we're in Zaria to wrap up the final service. That will be on the 13th. Wednesday 13th will be the Workers' Appreciation Dinner for Zaria. And then on Thursday, um, we'll be having a community project, a community outreach in the morning. So we'll be having a health and welfare for the community. That would be, I think, at Overflow 3 in Zaria. And then by evening, we have the concert. We'll be having a, an outdoor concert in Zaria, tag a night of worship. And then... Um, on Friday, we'll be having the final service. So that is a night of worship. It will be Koinonia Global. You'll be able to connect on all, all the programs on our social media platforms. But um, Zaria, I want you to prepare all those within Jos, um, Zamfara, and all these places. Let's come together Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Our final service for Zaria for this year will be on Friday the 15th. So Zaria... Our final service for Zaria will be the 15th. And for Abuja, our final service for Abuja will be the 17th. Sunday the 17th, we have our final service and we release you gallantly to enjoy the break, spend time with family, have your time of retreat, build capacity for next year. Resumption for next year. If you will be alive next year, say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. This announcement is for those who will be alive. January 21st will be our resumption for 2024. <laughs> Hallelujah. January 21st, it will be a combined service. All of our, our centers together, we're starting at the same time. Hallelujah. And then, as always, the prophetic word for the year, we run this vision by yearly prophetic words. We believe in it. The prophetic word for 2024 will be released 6 p.m. on the dot West African time on all our social media platforms. So Koinonia Global, just to give you, I will repeat it during our final service. And then um, you notice for a while that we lost, very funny, we lost our Instagram page, um, the Koinonia Global page. And we've been trying, working with the people to get it back. For some reason, we lost it. That's why we had to make do with Koinonia Abuja, but I'm glad to announce to you that Koinonia Global is back. Hallelujah. So, our uh, Instagram handle at Koinonia Global is back and functional. So, everyone, please connect with um, this Koinonia Global. Kindly follow, kindly share. Let everyone know that we're back. There were many reasons why we lost it, unfortunately, but we thank God. And I want to thank all those within this country and across the globe who helped to work to make sure that um, um, issues were raised to the highest level to make sure that our page is back. We're happy and we're glad. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then um, my mom, is my, is my mom here? Is she here? Okay. She came around. I thought she was here in church so that we we'll acknowledge her. But in absentia, give my mom a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord just decided to come and spend some time it's good for these elderly people to come and rest once in a while and go back hallelujah may your parents be proud of you in the name of jesus christ one more time i want us to appreciate dr francis miles we truly love you sir and we thank you for taking the time incredible ministry of the word can you spare me a minute i know we're out of time but i need to do this you want to make Jesus Lord of your life. You are in this place and you are saying, Apostle, I know that you preached on finances. But as for me, that relationship deficiency 
is about me and Jesus. And there are those who are saying, I truly want to make it right with Jesus. I love him. I've been looking for an opportunity to make it right with him. There are others who are saying, I need to rededicate my heart. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat and come right to the front. I expect at least one person to be bold enough and come and stand right here. I salute your courage. Let's clap for them as they come. I salute your courage. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, honor them as they come. Even though we taught on finances, this is all about Jesus. About loving him, living for him, serving him. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Let's celebrate those who have come. He always gives men a chance to live meaningful lives. And I thank you for making the bold decision to come to Jesus. May God bless you. Please lift your right hand if you can. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being bold enough to come. We're out of time, but for your sake, we'll spare a minute or two just to tell Jesus that you are here. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. You're joining them, please run, with all my heart. And I believe that you are the son of the living God. Tonight, I receive your life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come. I decree and declare based on the authority of scripture and upon your confession that the life of God is deposited in your spirit from today. You are a bona fide recipient of the life of God. I declare over you that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. And everything that serving the devil has brought to your life, we take it out of your life right now. We pray that you will live for Jesus. You will serve him truly all the days of your life. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please request that you move to my right, which will be your left. There will be counselors who will have a word with you very quickly, and you'll be back to your seat. Let's give them a big God bless you, Koinonia. Thank you. A big God bless you. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? Please rise up on your feet. As you have declared in Jesus' name, you will not want. For someone, your testimony starts immediately after the grace. In the name of Jesus. You will see emails, you will see text messages coming from strategic people. I say it again, you will see emails, you will see text messages coming from strategic people. It will be good news for you all through the week. The hand of God is already upon you and it is speaking upon your finances. You will not lack, you will not beg, you will not borrow. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Together as a family of faith, let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.